Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Montartica Podcast. It's been uh, a long time. I, I got uh, my buddy Noah in here again. Hey, hey. One of the OGs, he was I'm on the back. first one. We're both back. Anyway, it's been, jeez, uh, it's been, I don't know, I've did two comedy shows since then. It's been at least two months, if not longer. For yeah, it's been a while a since podcast. I've been on here. I don't know why I can't hear my background music. Lots of stuff's been happening, that's for sure. Yeah, what have you been up to? Just living the dream. Working, being the upstruck driver, raising kids. You what, know. Yeah, the raising no. kids thing takes up a, so much time. Oh, of a, know. you know, I mean, you got just as many as I do, and it's the amount of time when you start chasing them around town, or they get old enough to start like, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I know. Yeah, Lily just this summer has started just going out doing whatever the hell she wants. Yeah. Obviously, not anything she wants, but if she comes up and asks if she can go to the playground or walk to a friend's house or whatever. I'm. Yeah, I didn't think I'd ever be like, yeah, go ahead, get the hell out of here. But yeah, it's pretty easy to just send her on her way. That's Braden. He'll be like, hey, Dad, can I just go to the skate park? And he'll just take off with some of his buddies. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa I, I, you don't want me to go? You, <laughs> you don't want your dad to go? What about me? <laughs> you don't want you don't want to play dolls with me anymore? Yeah, so tell him, well, yeah, no, we're not cool enough anymore. I know. And then Ivy just turned five today. That's awesome. I think yeah, pretty soon she's gonna be sick of me too. It feels like it doesn't take long for them, like, oh, to no. just want to be their own person, you know, and it's it's a wild thing. It just, there was never a manual written for, for parenting. Yeah. That's no, the crazy thing. It's like, there's something that surprises me every day, and I'll yeah, be like, huh. Absolutely. You don't say. <laughs> like, I know. Life would be so much easier if we could still just be like that. Just not care about anything but what you want to be doing at that moment. Mm-hmm. It'd be a lot better. I think a lot uh, easier anyway. And kids these days, man, like they have never been born without the internet. Right. So like they've lived yeah. the entire time they've had be able to times have definitely changed. It, it's wild. The internet yeah, has completely changed everything. Yeah, I mean like they can learn anything they want on any video game like mm-hmm. when I was a kid if you'd get a code for a video game it was almost like top secret between right? your friends. It's yeah. like here's this. And you found it in some Nintendo magazine from way back. And I know. Like, I made a joke at the, our family reunion. Someone was asking for the code to something that was out there, but they needed the code. And I was like, what, like the Contra code? Like up, down, up, down, <laughs> left, right, left, right. Yeah. Like, nobody knew what I was talking about. Yeah, that's funny. What, uh, how'd that go out there? Oh, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. For some reason, my headphone sounds like I got we, some uh, sort of effect on it, but I don't know what it is. I didn't get to go out there the first day. I had to drive. That was when I was driving in Wolf Point. But mm-hmm. I, on that Friday, I took off and got out there. And holy, man, we rocked the freaking house down. Like, after we got done playing that night, I turned to Larry. I was like, we can't replicate this. Because Saturday was supposed to be, like, the big yeah. everyone come out and listen to some music. And we we rocked that Zorban bar. And Crushed on Friday, yeah, huh? Like, nice. The next day when I was playing, like, it felt good, but... I could just tell, like, I'd get done with a song, and it, the night before, it just, like, felt good. Like, yep. you know the feeling. You just got done, you're just like, oh, man, I just killed that song. Yeah. The, the next night, it just wasn't the same. It was still a lot of fun, but. I was going to come out Saturday, and I, I made it. I had somebody that was going to work for me, and I told him, I'll let you know by noon whether I'm going to come or not. It was pouring rain in town at noon, and I'm just like, well, I'll just, I'll just work here. I didn't know you guys were all out at the bar, but I, oh, yeah. I was like, I'll just work. And then I go to work, and there's nobody there all night long. Oh, I was like, that sucks, I was so man. mad at myself. And right when I walk in the door at 6 o'clock, it's like, oh, sunshine and rainbows. Right. I'm like, are oh, you yeah. kidding me? It, was, it rained sheets on us all day, and then about 6 o'clock out at the mountains, it just was beautiful. Yep. Like, other than the road washed out in a new river, yeah. Raging down the mountain, you could you wouldn't have known that it just rained that hard. Yeah, we played cards all day, jumped from camper to camper, played different cards games, and then that night, it was awesome. The night before, it was still just downpouring, and we had a lot of fun anyway. Yeah, I wish I would have went. I, uh, like I said I, it just, I knew that it was probably going to be shitty, and I thought everybody was yeah, in the campground. It, and I was like, well, I don't want to just go sit in a camper, you know. Yeah, it was shitty, but I mean, one. We made it fun. The bar. I mean, it was nice that was there, or else it would have been interesting. But Yeah. Yeah, it was a blast. 
I can't wait for the next one six years from now or whenever the hell we do it. <laughs> <laughs> my family hasn't had a like a legit family reunion for since I was a little kid, like my my mom's side of the family anyway, and then my dad's we all kinda there was actually they called it a family reunion like two weeks after my grandma's birthday, but we went up and everybody met for my grandma's 80th birthday a few years ago, oh, nice. just in Glasgow. But all that was was like just one night of us sitting in the cottonwood in the banquet room bullshit. Right. You know, it wasn't really. Still, that's. We good. played a little guitar good, and stuff. Dude. It was fun. Yeah. But. Yeah. See, this was this was the first one on the Coleman side. They had one in North Dakota like three or four years ago. Hmm. I didn't make that one. So the last one I went to was in Fort Peck. And it was fun, but. There, I mean, 9 o'clock rolled around, and we had park rangers coming in, like, you guys better be quiet. It's quiet time. And Oh, jeez. I mean, I was like a eighth grader, maybe yeah. going into my freshman year, and back then I was like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, well, we came we're out here camping. Party. We're, yeah. we're here to have a family reunion, not go to bed at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm not bashing on Fort Peck. Like, that's a beautiful no. place. It's awesome to go down there. But if you're wanting to have a family reunion and – your family likes to get a little wild. I wouldn't suggest there. We stayed one time in uh, Canada around this little lake up up north at a buddy's cabin. And we were old enough to drink at the time. You know, we were like 19. And we were walking around. We weren't doing anything. In the middle of the night, we are just walking around drinking some beers because we didn't want, like, all the old people who were in the cabin and whatnot. Yeah. We are walking around. We ran into, like, this little – he wasn't even a park ranger. He was, like, the mall cop of that <laughs> little Paul campground. Hartley yeah. And he's like – they stop us, and they're like, you know, you kids can't be walking around drinking. We're like, we're of age. What do you mean I can't? Well, that's open container. We're like, we're, at a, we're in the mountains. Right. Like, you know, yeah. like, what the hell are you talking about? And he, like, gets, he grabs all of our beer balls and, like, looks at us and really, like, shakes them out <laughs> on the ground like he's somebody tough. And we're like, well, cool guy. Everybody's giving him thumbs Pulls up. another one out of your back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You were so cool. That you, one was getting warm anyway. That poor fucking guy, man. He had to be the dorkiest kid of his. Oh, man. It, like, I felt bad for him when we walked away. I was like, he, he's he doesn't even know how to be right. a remotely decent human being. He yeah, was just no like, shit. <laughs> yeah, man, I thought we were going to get, we went to a softball tournament in Fort Peck this last weekend. Got our asses kicked the first game, and then we probably got the biggest fucking, we blew it. We were up like 12 runs in the bottom of the last inning and lost by oh. five or six, like. With two outs, we just could not Couldn't get, get him out. Like, even the ump after the game looked at me, he was like, man. That was a rally. I was like, I know. I was out there. But Well, Glasgow plays baseball year-round, yeah. too. Like, I mean, well, not year-round, oh, but they gotta, the they've team, had teams forever. The team that won it, the mill, they won it the year before, too. But they took second at the biggest softball tournament in America. Holy shit. In North Dakota, there's, like, this tournament with 430-some teams. and Wow. But, yeah, they were cool guys, but, but we were – that Friday when we all got our camp set up, there was just, like, different camps, you know, different teams were camped together, but everyone was still lighting fireworks off. Mm-hmm. And finally, one of the guys on our team was like, he brought some. He's like, oh, this is bullshit. He went and, like, lit off two of them, you know, choof, choof, shoot 30 shots yeah. up in the air. Just ridiculous. Like, we put everyone to shame. We were lighting off artillery shells. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, we're just sitting there afterwards. A couple of minutes go by. They, all we see is these two lights walking at us in the <laughs> dark. And we're like, fuck. Cops are coming. Cops come up, and they're like, were you guys lighting off fireworks? And I was like, maybe. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to just. And he's like, oh, that's cool. You guys can light them off for 10 more minutes. So if you got more, you better get to it. And we're like, oh, sweet. So we go out and just start lighting everything off <laughs> we had. And, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was uh, thinking for sure they were going to be like, you it was him. <laughs> you can't light fireworks off in city limits. No, they were cool. He's like, well, you got 10 more minutes before it's illegal, so get to it if you're going to do it. I got to uh, give a quick shout out. There's a, a gal, uh, I don't, I guess I'm sorry I'm forgetting your name, but she's from over in Idaho. And we had one, a guy we had on the podcast here. She'd met him somehow and started following the podcast. I got a message from her here last week. Telling me she about fell off the treadmill listening to Johnny's San Antonio Hitchhiker story. Oh, yeah. She's at the gym and started laughing about fell That's off awesome. the, the treadmill. Man, we might have to get like a disclaimer because I've had a couple people come up and be like, I had to stop the car because yeah. I was about driving off the road laughing. <laughs> if you crash due to laughing, yeah, it's no not kidding. our fault. Yeah, we should, maybe we got to open with that. Like, yeah. If you wreck or hurt yourself in any way, it is not our fault. <laughs> we are not liable to any listeners right. of this podcast. 
I, I, uh, I haven't even done a podcast. I've done, like I said, two comedy shows since then. I did one. Um, June actually marked 10 years of me promoting shows in Malta and around this area. It was my first one was back in 2009. We did the cage fights. And then so I put the one on in, in Glasgow, and I'd actually jumped venues a couple times there in Glasgow to try and figure out where I was going to go. And then finally locked in the Cottonwood, and it was my first sellout. Yeah, to that's celebrate awesome, ten man. years. So, oh, yeah. and then we went up to the ten cup and pretty much sold that out too. So, well, shit, yeah. I mean, fun times. Uh, any t- any show I've been to that you've done has been a blast. Oh, they're all hilarious. That's the, the reason I do it is because I enjoy it myself, right. you know. But it's it's a hell of a lot more fun when you got a full room full of people mm-hmm. laughing than yeah. Six man, that one there. at the city hall was. I laughed a lot. Yeah, that was pretty funny. And then I mean, it's funny when uh, they were doing that. I can't remember what part it was, but it was when uh, the guy that had the wind, he was talking about oh, the yeah, wind Connor. in his skit. Connor, yeah, when he asked um, the guy from Billings, um, asked him that question in Hector. He asked him yeah. what he liked to eat, and Hector jumps up and says chicken and waffles. Yeah. Dude, at my table, I looked around, like, I was laughing, because I seen <laughs> Hector said it, you know, and the funny part of the story is they're both black you yeah know, so there's one black like yeah, well, a couple one, black guys in malta yeah, whatever. not very many so like We're when pretty he said it everyone was and... like who said that like everyone was pissed well off. even will on stage looked right at who's was like yeah yeah he, he even because he's, he's looking at a room full of white people minute, yeah and was like uh, and he didn't know whether to get mad or... i had to jump up and run backstage and be like will will that was our, our only yeah, that was our, the only black guy that was in the our crowd lone right representative now. but anyway and even after that will went up to him at the bar and he's like dude you don't say that shit in front of a crowd. Like, you'd be, you know, like, yeah. in hell. But it, you could hear the whole room just go, oh. oh dude. Like, the groans was, were just. I thought it was funny because Hector was right next to me. And uh, Chris, I seen it was him, so I was like, oh, my Chris God. was ready to beat somebody up. He's looking around like, I who know. the hell is it? It was funny, though, because uh, uh, Lucas, afterward, when he when they found out who it was, he was like, oh, well, thank God it was the only guy yeah. in the crowd. That, you know. I, yeah, uh, those shows, they're a good time. I'm, I'm pretty happy that that people can come out and laugh with us. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing for me is getting Malta out to have a good time yeah. and not like, you know, and have an open mind. And when you sit there and mm-hmm. laugh and no matter what, I haven't had knock on wood too many problems. I've had in Glasgow. I had a couple, a drunk couple come through that were like, I had to go tell them to shut up a couple times, you know, but other than that, I haven't really? had, haven't had yeah, too much that happen sucks. that you're like, people are like that. And we knew it when they walked through the door, they were some of the last ones and he walked in like on his lips already. And right. We're just like, well, and you just go tell them to shut up, but these comedians have dealt with way worse. Right, I can you know, imagine. And yeah, it seems like any time they come here, though, they have a good time. Oh, I don't know if I've showed you yet. I got two portable stages now. Do you really? Yeah. Wow. They're nice. They sit just a little lo- lower than this bar that we're sitting at. Dang. And they're big. They're like uh, four foot by seven foot, each one of them. I got two of them. That's bad. So we can make them, man. we can have a stage wherever the hell we want, but. We should put some, we should put on like a little. I want to do something out of my cabin. I should have, like, a little music festival or something. Dude, there's enough talented yeah. people in Malta. Even if people didn't come, like... I'd like to do, it, like, even just a bring-your-own-beer event right. out of my cabin, yeah, you know? Yeah, just and something... Come... Charge five bucks for parking or right. something and let them come through. And then, but... Um, come get in campfire mode with Bill us. Pankratz gave them to me. He... I... So I came out one morning. I woke up... Couldn't sleep that day, and I woke up at, like, five in the morning, and I get up... And I'm out there. I got all my wood laid out, and I'm going to build a stage for the 10 Cup show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna. I better check first and put on Facebook. And I put this thing on Facebook. Anybody happen to have drum risers or a portable stage or anything? Literally, like, 10 minutes later at, like, 5.30 in the morning, Bill comments. He goes, I got two of them. If you can use them, you can have them. Wow. Like, you kidding me? So, by, like, 8 in the morning, I'm loading them up. And I go, I was like, well, what's the deal? He's like, well, I, bu- I bought them thinking that I could use them as a workbench, and they're not quite tall enough for a workbench. And so he's like, if you can use them, take them. Oh, so, yeah, thanks, man. Bill. Sure God damn, it's awesome. I'll use the hell out of them. Yeah. And we use it for the 10-cup show. It worked perfect. So. We should do that. Out mm-hmm. at the cabin or something. Just I could even... Badass. I was thinking even if I put them down, like, on the landing down by the river, mm-hmm. then it'd be like a natural amphitheater. Everybody could sit up. Everybody would have a good seat, you know? Dude, did you know Zortman has an amphitheater? No. Yeah. Okay, I, so... Maybe I've heard it before, but we, I've never seen it, I don't think. We got done playing in the bar that night, and the next morning, I'm with my dad, and... Rod's like, yeah, next time you guys should just use the amphitheater. I was like, where? And he, over behind the church, you know, that hill? Yeah. Behind that hill, they got an amphitheater built back there. I got to go look at it yeah. next time I'm there. I went and looked, dude. It was, 
I was been, almost like pissed off. Like, really? We could have been, been playing in this. Like, we could have been echoing shit off the mountain. Really? It would have been awesome. Wow. Yeah, that's a new option, huh? Dude. Yeah, you should do a show out there. That'd be cool. Do like a big time show out there. Oh, man. Just, like, anytime, it's like, they're all for anything. How many that, people do you think it'd seat, maybe? Oh, man. You could. Pack them in pretty good. Yeah, you could get. Salisbury had his wedding at that church. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I can't believe I'd never noticed it before. But, yeah, it's just sitting right back behind that little hill. I've always thought we got some really good coolies for an amphitheater around here. But the problem would be is if you ever got rained out, it'd just fucking right. wash everybody into the bottom yeah, of it. everything would be screwed. But, see, that's the thing about the mountains. Like, even with, we got. And it was dry. Four or five inches of rain in those four days. Maybe even more. I'm well, we went sure. out for 4th of I July, actually, and it was dry. Yeah, I think, actually, they said... They got seven, six inches. What yeah, six or seven inches in those couple days out in the mountains, and I mean, you can get around just fine. Like nothing gets too muddy out there. But those videos, that water was just raging. Oh man! Did I you mean, see my Snapchat? Yeah. Holy dude! Just raging through there. I seen yours, and then I saw uh, Nick Sills had some too. That, yeah. that same spot. And holy crap! Yeah, when I seen Rod out there the one day, and he's like, "I've never seen it like this." I was just thinking, really? Holy shit! What's nuts is how long it took. Like for the water to start running down like it rained we were at it was that night the friday we were down there playing at the bar Mm -hmm. i went up to the camper came back down and like 10 minutes later my dad comes in he's like you can't drive to the campers anymore you gotta park at the cabins Uh, and it just started washing just just like that like where was all that water sitting before it just decided to start running down i mean Obviously, the creek had to overfill before it started running, but... We took, and I haven't done a podcast since then either, we took a big camping trip up to the Little Belts, and yeah, then we went from that? Stanford, and we went straight in to Dry Wolf Creek. I even called the ranger, and they're like, oh, no, that creek's blow, blow. It does. The one guy, one person says, yep, it runs all the time, fish it, do what you want. My buddy from Lewistown said, yep, fish it. So I called the actual ranger station there. He's like, well, I've only been here for a little bit, but he, I'm pretty sure it's called Dry Wolf Creek because it's dry. We get up there, and it was literally like... Three feet higher than normal, river. but it, I mean, it was like, I fished a bunch and tried to catch something, but it was just too high, but it, it was so cool where we were at. We were in this little cabin, forest service cabin up in the mountains and, uh, up further, like we were right on the other side of showdown pretty much is where you're at. If you, you could take the one line right from where we were at. And if you drove like 14 miles down the gravel road, you'd be at showdown in oh, really? like up and over the mountain though. But you could see right from our cabin, the mountaintops were just covered in snow, but it was like. 80 degrees down where right? we were at. Yeah, that's nuts. Oh, dude. it was so much fun. And I mean, like, dude, right out the back of our cabin, you walk up and there's like a natural waterfall all the way down the whole mountain of that's a spring. So and like, it was all, there were spots where it was just covered in moss, like looked like a fairy world type thing, you know? Right. So cool. Probably. But I'll, I'll gladly go back again. We paid, uh, I think I paid 35 bucks a night for the cabin. And it's got five beds, yeah, propane heat, that. propane lights. Like, dude, all the firewood's already stocked. You just got to restock it when you're done. Really? Oh, it, dude, it was. That's awesome. It, why pack a tent? Right. For that price, thirty-five bucks a night. How the hell gonna beat cabin, that, dude? Heated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shit. And nice bunk beds had five beds in it, so. Plus, like, camping's the bomb, but, fuck, you can't seriously go camping in a tent and say, oh yeah, it was comfortable every night. It was yeah. awesome. Everything oh, no. about it was badass. Like. You have you, one or two nights where when you're, you're like. When you're tenting it, there's always something where you're just like, Jesus. Either it's way too hot and you wake up wet in the morning from mm-hmm. the humidity. Or oh, yeah. Anytime you're in a tent, it, if it's hot in the next day, like, you don't sleep in. I know. A couple of my cousins brought tents out to the reunion. And after that first night, one of them was damn near washed away. The other, <laughs> one, the other one was just in shambles. Looked like freaking tornado went through there. Do you have a camper yourself? No. I, no? I borrowed uh, my brother-in-law's. But oh, nice. I want to get one. Eventually. I had I've had one and I actually uh, <laughs> kind of a funny story. I traded it to my buddy for bailing me out of jail. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it was an old ass camper. Not bad. I'd uh, trade. I'd had a fine down in Billings that I I thought was taken care of and whatever. And one day I was I went out to the Billings hill climb, and my brother was hill climbing and I wasn't because I was working that year at, at High Tech Motorsports, and so I stayed as late as I could during lunch hour and I had to turn around. I was like I'm hauling ass back. I get pulled over and thinking, all right, speed and ticket, just get it over with, whatever. And he comes, he's like, I got a warrant for you. I'm like, what? Oh, it, I had a, had a careless driving ticket that I didn't pay the last bit on, I guess, and oh, ended up man. 
ended up going to jail for a day and my buddy bailed me out and uh after he bailed me out I like at that time I didn't have a lot of money I was young you know and and uh, I was like well I got a camper I'll give you you come bail me out and so he did and yeah I had to give him the camper oh well I only paid 200 bucks for the camper though so right <laughs> made it out on top mm-hmm. anyway yeah I want to get one Kelsey's not much of a camper but if I got a camper she'll go so. yeah Carol did. She liked it out there with us. She had an awesome time. Oh, yeah. I could but talk she grew up in into, Zortman, yeah. too, so. I could talk Kelsey into going out in one of them cabins. That'd be fun. Yeah. That when makes you, it so much easier with kids. Like, with, yeah. even with Rhea's age, you know, like, you feel so much safer if you can close and lock that damn door. And right. Not, like, just it felt so much better. First time I seen her after you guys got back, I asked her, and she's like, we seen bear poop. <laughs> she kept telling me, bear poop. <laughs> I There's thought at first she's, that she said you guys seen bears, and she's like, "No, bear poop." <laughs> seen bear poop. We, uh, I was look when I was searching yeah. for these, I found, uh, I found another one that's up there that's actually a, it's a, freaking lookout tower. So you can go up to like, you're up at like eight thousand feet, and you camp out in the lookout tower, and you can yeah, rent that for like forty bucks a night. That's bad, dude. That'd be so much fun to go all the way. I mean, obviously you got to hike down to anything you want to see, but Still, it'd be neat yeah. just to sit up just there and look up. at the stars. And yeah. Have you ever been to the tower up in Sortman? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know that was there until a few years ago. We rode four wheelers. Yeah, I've rode four wheelers and bikes up there. Man, that, you can see everything. From it's cool, there. isn't it? Yeah. Mountains see, are weird, man. How oh, like dude. differently you can get so high up there. And I love our little mountains. They're just big enough you could get lost in them for a day, and mm-hmm. but you wouldn't die. You'd just walk in any direction long enough, you'd run into you'd the road. Eventually, get out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they are cool. I I love the Little Rockies. It's uh, it, it'd be, I don't know, it'd be more fun if there was more running water up there. I mean, right. if it wasn't rainfall. I mean, yeah, there's definitely creeks and stuff, kind of. Mm. But like going to the Little Belts, man, they have like those pristine, just crystal clear yeah. creeks all over the place. And oh yeah, it was so we we walked way up one that was like, just, I mean, it, it, since there was so much. The kids actually got to go up and have a little, or Savannah ran across barefoot and went and grabbed some snowballs from a place. Oh, but really? there were so many places that were just like kind of flooding out. I mean, you know, the water flows like that every year, but just like these flat spots that were just two or three feet deep of just crystal clear water all mm-hmm. the way across it. And it was, it was really cool. It was, uh, I want to go back again this summer before it's too late. But man, I had a little slice of heaven this afternoon out delivering. Oh, yeah? It was heaven and hell mixed together i'm driving by the frenchman dam and on the lower part of it now there's a part of the creek that's cut off walleye everywhere in it at first i thought there really? were carp yeah because oh, you know carp yeah. they kind of get together and yeah yeah so i stop and i'm looking and i'm like no fucking way i could i could see their dorsal fins yeah and i knew carp they kind of have those too but i walked down there sure as shit walleye everywhere in this little pond oh wow. i was like throwing rocks at the bigger ones trying to get one i'd go snag it good little, <laughs> good little flays but holy shit I'd, I'd never seen so many walleye just wow yeah i kind of want to go back with a net or something no shit do you yeah like get about 12 guys then it'd be our limit if we caught all of them when they're that thick you could literally just you could it's probably the time you could put in a pole with a hook on it and not even a oh, worm yeah. and they'll bite it they'd be like freaking piranhas yeah be like perch in the winter time Let's pause it real quick. I'm gonna grab another beer and do it. Carry on, since uh, I, I don't really drink that much anymore either. Like me either, man. If I'm not in here, you know, or well, even in here, like I don't really. I can't, dude. I, like my shoulders. I think I was reading. Like I always thought you could only get gout in your yeah, feet, but like you can get it in any joint. And any time after I get a little buzzed up from beer the next day my shoulders hurt so i've never got gout bad. i don't think but like, i don't know if the that's next what the is, next day when i if i drink my knees hurt same thing i mean like like i, I feel like aching. i've been dancing all night yeah, yeah just like, like bone ache constant yep. deep dull yeah and i, I bartend on the weekends but we don't you know i don't drink while i'm doing that and then that's that's pretty much like going out and having the party and then by that time i'm sick of the bar right during pool leagues i, I do that on wednesdays when when that's going on but mm-hmm. during the summer even even out the cabin, I'll go, just mostly because I got kids, you know, I'll go out and I'll have two, three beers and then it's time to go home or whatever. You never, yeah. I don't go out and get shit faced the way that I oh, did no. before. Yeah. It was just, it was funny. This over the fourth, we went over to Nicholson's and had a little fire and I was sitting there and it dawned on me. I had to tell him, I was like, this is the first time since high school that I've drank 
every weekend for like three weekends in a row. I was feeling it. I was, yeah. It's, I was I, like, no more. I'm going to take about a six month break. And Those guys are so funny. Like, I've been up at the skate park now, and, and Jay Nicholson skates a bunch, and he's getting good. But all of them are like, Brandon and Jay are so much alike. Like, you could literally text one of them in the middle of the day and be like, dude, I text you at three o'clock. Brandon will text you back. Sorry, dude, I've been sleeping. I woke up at four or something. Right? Yeah. Jay's the same way. We were up at the skate park, and Shane goes to go down and try and get him tonight, and he skates up there, go wake him up or go get him. Sleeping. Comes back. It's six o'clock at night. He's like, oh, he's sleeping. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, they kind of run on a different yeah. schedule. <laughs> anyway, let's pause it real quick, Boop. We'll be right back. And we're back. Anyway, we were uh, just having a conversation about us playing music and learning New songs, like talking about going to a house party. I, I go and sit with my dad, and I play, you know, most of the stuff I play has got a little bit of a rock tone to yeah. it, whatever. Or you got to get and, loud in yep, some parts. Screaming out. Know. And he's like, don't you have anything? You just sing clean, like some good old country. Some So I've learned a couple country songs recently, and then you were talking about, like, yeah. everybody always shouts songs, and you're like, oh, that would be a good one to learn. Right. And then you get drunk the rest of the night, and you completely forget about it. You come home, and you're like. I'm the guy that, like, everyone's was like, that you song? should learn that one. And I, like, grab my guitar like I know it. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't Sorry, know that no, song, yeah, guys. I'll give it a try. But <laughs> right? Let me think for a second. Yeah, I know it's you get done playing all your shit, and everyone's like, that's really good. But yeah, you don't know the shit we want to hear. We went down. I hate that, dude. That's like my biggest thing when I listen. I'm playing. You want to play it? Here's yeah. the guitar. I say that all the time. Like, like I'll, I'll I think that's there. why that night at the family reunion was so good because like. Nobody said that. Yeah, nobody. Every, we had enough people there that everyone played their shit and was like, that's, yeah. Yeah. You know, and like, but, yeah. Anytime I'm, like, forced to fucking, like, this at Fort Peck, I brought my guitar, but, at that softball tournament, but I ended up drinking up too too, too much beer throughout the day. Yep. To where when someone was like, get it out, let's play something. I knew I was going to sound like shit. Didn't want to play, or I'd start playing something, and someone would be like, "Do you know fucking?" And it's like, "God I, damn it!" I did that the last. No, time. I don't know every fucking song on iTunes. Like, like two times ago, well, two times ago when I went down to see my dad, we went down for my niece's wedding, and we all sat around and played a little bit. And there was another dude that sh- came up and played a bit, and it just like we never really had a crowd. Like my dad and I were like, what happened is the photographer kept pulling the entire wedding party out to go take more pictures, like. When the reception should be going That's on. The worst. So, like, you lose the whole, you know, you lost the whole party there. So my dad and, and Brayden ended up jumping in and grabbing a guitar. And he jumps in and he starts playing Crazy Train and, like, a bunch of the ones that he knows. And he's just, like, blowing minds with it because he's, he's actually right. getting pretty good now. And he's he's playing well and Jay's out there all headbanging. I'm just like, well. So, and then, like like I said, you play one song and they'll go, oh, that's great, but can you play yeah, this but one? can you do this? And I'm like, yeah. okay, so... I, I learned to play along a few. Uh, I learned change in my pocket with my dad. I can do like the whole bluesy yeah. part with that, and, which was fun. But I, that's him singing, so that I just gotta follow along and let him be a rock star, you know. Right. And then, but then Kinda people would be like, "Hey, play Hootie and Blowfish. Play this." Blow. I'm like, yeah, "Okay, is that how it goes?" You know. I don't whatever. know that song. Yeah. I'm playing the stuff. Well, here it is. Here it is. Then people walk up with their iPhone and they're like, "Here it is." And they're oh, like, "Showing you." Like, that is the worst. Uh, yes, I know that they can play it. I right? still don't like. Give me a day and I can learn or, it. But like, or the songs you kind of know, but you don't want to yep. play because you're like, "I don't know all the lyrics." Yep. Fucking boom! Someone's got a phone in your face. Oh, here they are. Here's I'll, the lyrics. Do I'll it. even sit here and scroll it for you. While... I'm, I'm like, yeah, but I don't know the bridge part. Right. You know, like what? I, you're you just, just searching for something to click in their minds. Like maybe he doesn't want to play this. And song. then the worst part is like. You get enough beer and you finally you're like, fuck it, let's try it. Yeah, right. And then you go for then, it. Then and you're, you're doing like, good and then you get to the part. The I've, part. Yeah. I've just started like I'll play songs that I know the lyric. Once I get to that part, I'm like, I don't know the rest of the fucking Me words. too. Just make Someone it up. Someone help or... me out. <laughs> yeah. Sing yeah. along. Right. <laughs> let's make up words, guys. Me and old, uh Matt did that at the fourth. But it was yeah. one of like my songs I made up. He's like, Do you have anything? And I didn't want to play the only song I've written. Yeah. So I just started playing kind of the only country riff I've ever made up and told him I didn't have words. He's like, oh, hell, let's fucking make some. Nice. All right. I don't remember any of them. We did. Uh, something stupid. So the next time I went down to my dad's that I'd, uh, it was just, we went down, uh, what the hell was it for? Oh, the Big Sky All-Star game for 
oh, Andreas yeah. was playing in it. So we went and watched that. And then that night, we went out and ate with Carol's family and everything. And then, like, it's getting back to, like, 11 o'clock, midnight. And I'm getting back to my dad's house. And I'm like, I got to go. Like, I don't hardly ever see my dad. I got to go see him, you know. And he's he was doing karaoke out at the bar. So I went out, and I sat there, and I actually ran into one of my old wrestling buddies from Huntley at the bar there and mm-hmm. listened to everybody sing karaoke and have a good time. And then when we were done, my dad and I went and sat in his little bar room, and we fucking played guitars till the sun came up, just him and I just oh, dude, belting sweet. songs all night long. And it was, badass, I mean, like, man. that was the Something polar opposite. Forget, yeah, but... that was the polar opposite of, like, what was going on at that wedding where, you like, you're, everybody's, like, got to play something everybody right. wanted. Like, you had to play the, the cruise or, the you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And... uh him and I, I was like, I even showed him a couple of my own original stuff. I was like, here, Dad, I need you to play. Like, right. I need to know where to go with this what song. And him and I do? got it. And he'd pick something up. And, man, that's. That's sweet, man. And he ended up finally, he's like, Travis, the sun's up. Hmm. I have to go to bed. Right. <laughs> I'm like, but, but, but. But, Dad. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Dad, we're so close. Don't let me go. Don't make me go to bed. <laughs> I listened all night. I was polite the whole time. Yeah. It was fun, though, man. Yeah, I, that's sweet. I think that's kind of why that family reunion, that's sweet. We both kind of had that experience. Mm-hmm. Because that was how that was. Like, anyone who knew how to play the... Like, even Silt showed up and was playing yeah. fucking harmonica to shit. Like, he was badass. I, I can't remember out. his name, but some local from either Hayes or mm. Zortman or I don't know where he lived. But he even... I was, like, halfway through a song, and he walked up to the stage giving me the old, give me the fucking guitar. Mm. You know, introduced himself. He's like, can I play one? I was like, fuck yeah, dude, do it. Nice. He played a badass version of, uh, oh, what's that song? You don't like the way I'm living. Oh, yeah. But he played, like, this Oh, sweet, I bet Nick was right into that. That's oh, one of his man. favorites. Like, he played this sweet, like, picked it with, wow, it sounded more bluesy than the nice. original, you know? But that was the only, okay. he played about, he came up to me about six times that night, and that was the only song he played. Mm. It just kept getting worse and worse. Well, Depends on how drunk you are. Oh, I did. I said I don't. I don't drink a whole lot. So if I'm like really partying, at a, oh and, man! But I'll sit down and I'll try to belt a couple songs that I know I think I know. You know, and, and sometimes it works out. Oh, dude! I sometimes did. Sometimes you're a fucking rock star, but then there's other times you just you finally get to the point you're like, I I played I can't a do it anymore. Tenacious D song, not the <laughs> ones I usually do. I played Roadie. I don't know if you know that yep, one. Yep. But I I try to sing that one. Usually can't do it. I was feeling pretty good, but. When I started, that's a song to where I was like, this is either you're just going to fucking really piss people off. I knew, like, Zach and those guys and my brother would like it and shit, but, dude, the fucking everyone was like, I could see jamming. them throughout the bar, like, jamming, like, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so that's, that's, one I'm, that that's definitely in my back pocket from now on. Which, one of the worst parts for me, like I said, when I do or was playing around my dad, is I'd always be like, just, you got to bow down to him, you know? He's right? so fucking oh, good. Yeah. And... It's, there was this time here, this is at the Stockman one time, and I'd been playing quite a little with Jody Lee at the time, and, and my yeah, dad he sat was around. supposed to go out there, he didn't fucking Yeah, go my dad sat around, Jody. we played, and they ended up getting, him and the other crew ended up getting too drunk, and I sat around by myself with all of his friends, and they like, they're like, well, we don't know how to play guitar, you gotta keep playing. So finally, I'm just getting, I was getting into it, you just know, finally, like, all right, song. let's do it, yeah, these are, dude. I know everything now. And that's one of those nights where, like, it's weird how lyrics will completely escape you on one night, and then the next mm. night you can remember every damn song you ever fucking picked I know, up. dude. And that was that that night. I was like, you know, I had shoes to fill. Mm-hmm. It was something to do, but... Yeah, man. It's, yeah, fuck. That is funny how that works. I played out in Whitewater a little bit the mm-hmm. night before that just so I could go see Zach and then when they got to town. And I couldn't remember... Like, I have 17 songs i think on my notebook on the where i when i'd go out and play at the bar or at the yep. 40 or something 17 songs i could only remember like three songs that night i couldn't even i was just drawing a blank on even what yep. the names were but then that next night out in zortman i fucking remembered every one of them and then some i get nice Shit like that, that i haven't terribly. played in years where you get like you said you'll remember you remember the three songs that are all the same chord progression then you're like i can't like for right. some reason i can't even get this strum right or i can't it's weird for me i know when and then you're feeling nights, it, just... it just comes. But when you're, when you pick it up and you're not even really feeling like doing it, that's what I'll sit there and play like stupid same fucking chords and then like try to start a conversation with someone so I don't have to play. But... You you always see like, the big time bands that go out and they play every night, you know, oh, forever. Man. After you... traveling yeah. all night, and, and you know that there. they gotta give certain shows gotta be better than others because oh, that's yeah. just the way that. 
the the art of music works. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can't go out and crush every night, and you know that you, like I know that the more they play, the better they can be. But oh yeah, it's got to be different between here and Boise or where. Definitely, like, definitely. Just like we were just talking. Some nights, I bet you they go out there and they're just like. Hell well, yeah. Hey, let's play four Metallica songs like, because this is feeling good yeah. tonight. Let's just rock it. And then the next night, I bet all they want to do is get the hell out of there. Yeah. You, know? you can tell when you go to a concert like that, too. I've never been to a big one to where, or enough of that's them. That's crazy. You know, just, I've been to lots of, and it's hard for, I always say, I've never, I've been to one, but it was that, like, Christian Jam Festival. And yeah. I'm not bashing on that. That was so but, cool. Yeah. That was, like, one of the most powerful experiences of my life. But... That's the only, like, big, big concert. I think the Moda Center was jam-packed. Really? And the one wow. lady at the gate said it holds just over 22,000 people. Holy shit. If all the press boxes are filled, which they were. Like, yeah. It was, dude. I put We had a 22,000-some-plus group of people, like, choir Holy. at one point. Everyone knew the song. Like, dude. Yeah, That's the way the Garth Brooks saying, concert like, was. Powerful. Oh, dude, I heard that. Dude, everybody in there is just fucking at the top of their lungs. Yeah. I've that, got friends yeah, that in is so low. badass. It, dude, it, like... Nothing's there, like that, dude. Because you know the, everyone in there is feeling exactly yeah. the same. Like, nobody's being dumb. Dude, the Everyone's point when he handed awesome. the guitar off to that kid, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. I, sh- I look right at Shane and I, and we're like, he's one of the toughest fuckers, right. you know? Like... We both got tears streaming down our face. <laughs> oh like, my god! Like, it, dude, it was just it was one of those experiences where, oh, like, yeah. the fucking hair stand it's on nuts, your arms dude. and Shit everybody's like singing and like they told stories with like their big big screens and did things, but it was uh, Garth Brooks is hands down the best entertainer on the planet, oh, dude. Yeah, and even it's country, whatever kind. That guy is a. F- Anyone... He walked on stage and he'd control that whole crowd without his band and by himself for five six songs, oh, yeah. and he just got out and just. But he's got Dude, that charisma on stage. He's, is freak I've show watched good. lots of videos and shit. Mm-hmm. And like anyone I've ever talked to, like a couple of my aunts have been to a couple of his shows. And Dude, I've been to the biggest rock stars too. And oh, yeah. Him hands down has controlled the crowd better yeah, than anybody they, I've ever seen. They said he is the best performer they'd ever seen in their life. Yeah. Fuck, everybody's walking out of the building high-fiving and yeah, hugging like, each other and shit. That's like. how that one, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this one little chick i passed probably had never been to church in her life and she's like high fives for jesus like <laughs> fuck, dude everyone was just like i want to yep. be your friend yeah i want to be your friend whoever the hell you are you're my friend like yeah that, that dude yeah Garth brooks was one of them i've been to quite a few like that were like almost feel like life-changing concerts you know oh, man. but i've definitely been to a bunch that you went fuck those guys they were dude, like I, I liked them better motley when I crew in. oh they suck live Probably I know. I, I went to him in Billings. Yep. Michelle Nicholson gave me tickets because she couldn't go. He was terrible. And, dude, I was pumped. I went with uh, Garrett. Oh, what's his last name? Alice Cooper crushed, though. Yeah. He was fun. I and always, he's one of those guys every night that's just. Yeah. I sat through two songs of that Miley Crew concert and turned to Garrett and I was like, this fucking sucks. They were terrible. I almost didn't even want to. I was like, we were walking in the gate. Like, and I could just tell. It was the first big concert I've ever been to. And just walking through in the line of people waiting to get in, like, the vibe just sucked. I mm-hmm. was like, this is just what Everybody was fuck? mad. Everybody, Yeah, like, nobody was just, like, pumped to get in. There was a few, you know, hardcore fans that you could tell. We, was, uh, but, I, I seen one dude jump down the side of the, like, you know how the, the stairs go back and forth yeah. there? Carol and I seen one guy making a break for it because they opened up another line at the door. Her and I ran, and, like, we literally were in way before everybody else and just, like, nice. sitting there, like, yeah, Waiting. fuck yeah. <laughs> we're, our seats were pretty close. We were on the just side stage, but we were really close from side stage. And it, the, he, ter- music-wise, Vince Neil sucks. The rest of it was cool, you, though, you know, like, all the pyrotechnics and the fucking huge right. stage and all that and the drum roller coaster and all That's all neat. But Vince Neil sucks. <laughs> and how the fuck, like... I don't know. He's just terrible. He just back in the day, sure, but yeah. I mean, he had some albums that were they kick ass. They got some good music. Yeah. But his live concert was dog shit. Yeah. He couldn't hit a fucking note of his own at all. Yeah, I didn't like it. But I've been to plenty of them that they could. That. Yeah. See, I'd like to go to. One. I've been to, like the White Buffalo, two different times. Small, like up close and personal venues, and I thought that was badass. Like. There was a couple hundred people, so pretty, a little over that at the one in Missoula. But that yeah. one in Oregon we went to, that place was jam-packed, and there's only, like, 80 people in there. Oh, maybe wow. 100. 
People are uh, pretty sure it was like a show they did and just that was on the way. And they're like, well, we can make a quick little buck here. Might as well stop. But yeah. it was awesome. Got Those to are the talk best. to him. Fucking A. He signed, that was the one he signed my guitar before the show yep. where we park. And as we're parking, I'm like, no fucking way. There he That's is. him. That's a buffalo. When I, uh, this just going into Big Sandy this last week, when I, or two weeks ago for the skate jam, I pull into Big Sandy, turn the corner. Very first person I run into, there's Jeff standing next to his car. He's like, hey, Travis, how you been? And I'm oh, like, man. holy shit. I just rolled right into, roll into Big Sandy now. Like, there's a ton of people all there, right. you know, that I all know. And and right Jeff's there. the very first one I talk to. Oh, and yeah. he's like, hey, how you been? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Back. Fucking cool, Carlson dude. was there, too. Was he? Yeah, he was there Gosh. again. I talked to Dude, you got to go to one of these with me. It's dude, so much fun. You went I to the Lewistown one. But I had it in the calendar. I'm not even the, kidding you. The Big Sandy one is more fun because you stay the night and you go to the bar and jam. and. Yeah, see, that after I talked to you that evening, I totally forgot I put it in my calendar yeah. for the night before. And about 8 o'clock that night, the alarm goes off. It's skate jam tomorrow. Like, <laughs> I had it planned to go, yeah. but it just... Ah, this didn't work Man, it was out. so much fun. Even I mean, I've so this is three years in a row now. I've been solo, and every time it's dude only gotten year. cooler. It's only gotten cooler for me because now I know more and more people, you know. And like I've met, like dude, there's in the skate industry, there's the who's who's of right almost all of them there, and like we're all just hanging out at a bar in Big Sandy, and like we've became friends because we yeah, all that's badass. Know each we're all there for the same reason, and it's it's cool. Yeah, man. that one in Lewistown was sweet. There was a lot of pro skaters there that day. Yeah. That one guy from Wyoming. Oh, he's a stud. I he was, was sitting there, there just, like, recording those guys hitting that transfer over the big hump in the bowl when they were. Yeah. And he's like, you want to record some stuff? That was those ones when I was just following them on my board. Recording yeah, those them are hitting cool. All them ridiculous, like, street tricks and shit. But yeah, that, those are sweet. Next year, it's going to happen. Mark yeah. it down, this podcast. Big Sandy, yep. I'm if I sure try I'd... to bitch out, you can, like, turn this part on and be like, you fucking said I it. bet I could go back and there's a podcast that says this for this year. Oh, I'm did. sure. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't do that. Then yeah. people be like, oh. No, it said it last no, year. No, it said it last and year. And the year it's gonna happen. No. <laughs> it ain't happening. No, it was, it's just a cool experience, you know? Like, not oh, even, yeah. I don't, it's just my kind of people, I guess. It's right. you, like, you go and you camp and you stay the night and oh, yeah. you wake up in the morning. We were up at 8 in the morning skating. Like, it yeah, was, that's dude, sweet. it was so fun. I went so hard in Lewistown that day. I, yeah. I mean, I still got a dent in my head to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, gotta it get up a there lot more, of fun, You got to get up to the park here more. Oh, I know. Well, I Jesus, I told you the last time I went up there when Caleb was in town. I, was like, like, I can't I, believe it's taken me over a year to get back. I haven't been back. Since. I went with the girls one, one day, but. Savannah was uh, rolling in from the roll-in and then going to the big bowl on her scooter yesterday. Was she? Her day before, I guess. Nice. She was doing good, and then there got to be a bunch of high school kids up there skating around, and she ended up cra- – one of them, like, scared her by going by her. Right. And she crashed, and, like, you know how Savannah's, like, so tough. She wouldn't say anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Sitting there talking to her, I was like, what's wrong, honey? She's like, do you think Carol could come get me? I'm like, well, yeah, what's up? And she's sitting there, and then pretty soon she's like, whoa, I crashed over there. And then she started telling me the story. Hurt and, her pretty good. And I'm huh? like, well, uh, what's hurt? You know what I'm asking? And she still hadn't hardly squirted a tear. And I was like, well, ba- or, okay, take one little, like, I don't want you to be scared of it. Just go do one more, you know? And she's like, I can't. And then pretty soon she sat down and she broke down and started crying. And like three minutes after she'd crashed. And then she's like, she was bruised up the next yeah. day too. And I'm like, that tough little shit. I know, like, dude. Lily's about the complete opposite. <laughs> I felt bad, but like. Savannah is like she could run head oh, first into the wall and like I'm okay. <laughs> I know I've seen her plenty of times at our house. Her and Lily playing and she'll like the one day her and Lily went running into the living room and our counter. You know how it is like it's rounded off right, but she ran right into it. Oh, <laughs> and turned around and looked right at me and I could tell like I'm sure it probably gave her a pretty good dead arm. But well, like, right. are you okay? Yep. Turns I'm, around I'm goes okay. running off. Went hid in the corner and probably rubbed her arm a little bit. Yeah, but yeah she's a tough. Oh, that's tough a, so I knew when she. If she didn't want to get back, I knew she had to slam. Nobody seen it. Oh, so all yeah. of us were like, nobody Dude. knows how bad it was, you know? And that sucks when you just slam. Yep. I remember jumping out of there the one time and wrecked and slammed my leg, like my shin, like perfect flat against just slammed it off of there. I <laughs> jumped up and tried to walk and couldn't. I, I remember nobody was there. I remember looking around like, fuck. I know. <laughs> kind of broke down for a second like, Jesus. 
<laughs> I was about five minutes went by before I could put any weight on it. I was telling oh those kids God. today a story. I my next door neighbor's driveway is real steep, so I just jump on and I skate out of it. And I come racing out of it, and I'd like turn. I used to jump up and on to across the street my neighbor's their driveway. I skate a little circle there, and I'd kind of jump the curb, and I'm coming up. Well, the end of their sidewalk has just grass, so you have to jump off the curb. And this one, I was just literally kind of just first learning to skateboard, right? Yeah. They're all out there in lawn chairs and shit, and here I go. I'm fucking skating along, and I come by, and I'm like, just going to jump off the curb like it's nothing. Jump off the curb, hit a death pebble, and wow. Oh. Just face plant right in front of all of them, right on the street. And you could hear every one of them go, ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, uh, okay. Yeah, Pick up your Jesus. pride and skate back home. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, try not to I'm live. fucking 35 years old, face plant in the middle of the street oh, on a skateboard. <laughs> Freaking pebbles, jeez. I know, the one day they were up there at the girls, I dropped in and seen one and immediately just bailed, went up, yep. and Kelsey's like, what are you doing? I picked that little thing up, and I was like, death pebble. This could end she, my life. She looked yeah. at me like I was an idiot. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not even going to explain. I tossed it out. <laughs> They're, uh... I, I've got wheels now for, I've got the right ones for on the street here in Malta now that they don't, like, you can, the other day I was coming back and, like, see this giant rock, and I'm like, oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, and it just, boom, mows right it over, over it. right, oh, right nice, out of the way. Dude. These ones are nice for my, I got my longboard and my other one. Yeah, I've been scared in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, that moose damn near trampling me, my heart, I could tell, is about ready to stop. That's about the same feeling when you're hauling ass and you just notice it yep. right before you're going to hit it, them fucking rocks. You just like, know it's going to go, Arr! boom. Arr! There you go, and you're fucking I've only done. hit, like, two, and the only one of them was I slammed pretty hard. But I've had probably the same. I, I've I've that had a couple. When I first did. started skating, I had a couple that, like, you just didn't even see coming. Yeah. And then they go, whap, and you're right on the ground. I'd almost rather it be like that instead of yeah. seeing them. You're like, fuck. <laughs> it's slow. Tiny bowl. little pebble, but you know it's just gonna ruin your day. <laughs> Jesus, no! I took uh, I took my longboard down the highway the other day out um, out south, past Chad and Alicia's, the first place that's like that yeah. first hill that goes down a long ways and then turns. And around and yeah. So I jumped on there and like it's perfect. I'm just surfing for the first part of it. It's all nice. Then it gets steeper, and I'm going so fast I can't. I'm trying to like foot brake, pull my foot off, and just slow down. Won't happen. Oh. Not slowing nothing down. And what it, the reason I was going down it anyway is we were driving up and we saw, I found a fucking uh, lawn chair. Oh, nice. So I was like, oh, let's go back and get it. And Scored. then I got, a, I got to the top of the hill. I was like, I'm just going to ride my longboard down. So I jump on and I'm skating. It's perfect. It's perfect. Get going a little fast. The once I stuck my foot down and I, I caught one of those rumble strips in the middle, it literally like ripped me off the board and I ran it out, you know. Oh, nice. That was okay. So I get back on and I start skating and that's when I start going really fast. And I'm like, I can't slide sideways i can't slow it down i can't you nothing. Just gotta go so i went i'm going 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 and finally i'm like i this is gonna get ugly if i don't i don't want this kind of road rash so i aimed towards the ditch and as soon as i hit the grass i jumped off and just like right. the, the worst part was i'd been sitting all day and i went from sitting all day to running a sprint faster than i can yourself. even go yeah. like i mean my legs are wheeling like a cartoon and i i ran it out again but i swear i pulled every muscle from my oh, nipples man. down yeah and then and then i picked up the lawn chair and I'm going, and I'm, like, just trying to get to the bottom. And it starts picking up so much speed again that I'm, like, I'm fucking dead again. <laughs> so I'm holding the lawn chair, and I'm holding it on the ground, going, gzz, 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 just trying to slow down. By the time I get to the bottom, the fucking pegs on the lawn chair are, like, ground off. <laughs> but Jeez. it was – it. I want to get a longboard. Now, that was so much fun. And I did, part of it was I didn't have my pads on or anything. Right. I want to get a longboard now that – has wheels that I can actually power slide and go sideways, slow down like you do, you know, on a snowboard mm. going sideways. That'd be such you a can fun do that hill. On board. Yep. You wow. just. <laughs> you just gotta the the wheels I got right now. They're like some really sticky ones that. Yeah. They're just meant to, not ever slide. <laughs> so. Yeah, man. Talking about boarding, I can't wait. I'm gonna snowboard this year too. I after went, taking that one out. I went four or five times, but. You're it, right. I it took costs out, money, right? but it's just not enough. Like, I agree. I wish I lived in a mountain. I could. I almost need to just like buy a pass. So yeah. I'm like, Kelsey, I I spent yeah. seven hundred dollars or whatever. To go. Like, yeah. Even when the like the girls are about to that, Ivy's mm-hmm. event. She asked me all winter every time I'd go if she could go. So I, next year I wouldn't mind bringing all of them if they wanted to go. Yeah. 
I'd still need to get my couple trips in by myself. We should make a weekend where we take all of them. The yeah. Because all the girls would like to go, too. Oh, man, we can. And Rhea's athletic enough. I know that if I put her in lessons, she'll be able to pick up those lessons, you know, like small ones. But I, uh, Braden's getting good enough now. He hangs with me. Like, we, him and I have taken a couple. Tri- this year, we took two trips on our own. Mm-hmm. And I can ski with him most of the, like, he yeah. can keep up. He can go, like, to the fun stuff that I want to ride, you know, like, and he's yeah. he's not doing anything spectacular, but he can ski yeah, to, it can and still, to it and still and still ride with me, and it doesn't slow me down too much, you know. Right. Which is awesome. Like that's. But yeah. this year I'm gonna snowboard. I think I oh, I snowboarded those few times just up north um, when I told you I was gonna take my board out, and you were right. I picked it up right away. Oh, I knew you would. Uh, you skateboard. I it's... could I could snowboard. I could go fakie too, all the way down mm-hmm. the hill and still turn and stop. And yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to be a world beater, but I know that I could get. No. Up, I know I could get off the lift. That's and the ride biggest it out thing and, is just being able to get up to the top of the mountain and not fucking crash the whole no. way down. Like I knew you'd pick it up within the first couple hundred feet. You'd figure, it was. You would have figured out how to stand up and be just fine. It was. I, sk- I actually the very I went down once, made it all the way to the bottom, and like Dude. turned to stop, and I was like, huh. And I walked up to the top, and then I got this, like, piece of metal that's out there that was stood up. And I'm like, i got to go off that. So then I, I got on there, jumped, turned into it, yeah. rode down, <laughs> yeah. stopped. At the, and then and I was man. like, and then pretty soon I'm like, I'm going to try fakie. And After a winter of snowboarding, I bet you're longboarding. I bet you wouldn't have even thought you were going that fast on that hill. Oh, yeah. Dude, exactly. I got, I told you about that chick. I never, I never told that story on the podcast, but the speed skiing team at rocky was practicing the one day oh really at red lodge yeah and you know we'd been going i'm feeling good you know haven't wrecked yet at all and a couple of them you know they're <laughs> taking their runs straight down this hill like it wasn't very long but and then they had one of their coaches at the bottom clocking them and i turned to jake was the one it was either jake or jade but i was like i can do that shit and they're like Shh. Prove it. So <laughs> I did. As soon as the chick started going, I, like, timed it and jumped on the slope with her. Dude. And smoked her. Like, went <laughs> flying by and to the point where I was like, oh, fuck. Like, the whole time you're fastest riding, you're I'd ever gone. 60 dude. miles an hour going, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> dude, when I turned to start slowing down, I skipped across, like, <laughs> if it had to have been 60-some feet, dude. I was like, Poof. <laughs> slowed down and i was like holy shit anyway ran into that girl i'm like how fast did your coach cl-? her coach clocked her in at 62 oh shit so, so you're like, on ass i had to have been going 70 plus like because yeah. i flew by her <laughs> like holy shit so That's sweet i know i could go that fast but yeah, i do that i there's a lot of times on skis i'll just tuck it and go oh, too dude. you know like I, I like to do that too like you, i've been with you you've mm-hmm. been with me like we hit them hills where you just just go right yep. down it. You know, you don't stop until you're to the next kind of flatter part. But that was on a whole nother level, dude. And Braden and I hit seventy miles we, an hour. Is oh, it's fast. It's fast, holy shit. We Braden and I got again at Showdown, one of the best fucking snow days. Dude, Showdown was a place to be this year. It was so fun. For the places we go, they got hammered. Yeah, we we went and uh, well, the one day I was making fresh tracks all day. <sighs> Even at the end of the day, I'm like, I take, I found a couple new spots that were yeah. so much fun. And for anyone who hasn't ever done that, skeet or snowboard, Man, fresh powder is like, it sounds cliche and dumb, but it is like dreamy. I tell, it's like you're I tell in a whole Carol, other world. I tell Carol, it's like floating on clouds. It I mean, is like you're just you're floating on. clouds, Even if but you're, you're only in going seven miles an hour, like I yep. do a lot, like in and out of them trees, you know. It's, but that's what it is. It's you're so like on fun. a whole nother dreamland. You're like Archer. You're just like <laughs> in this whole other little <laughs> thing, you know. Like yep. you're just fucking loving every part of it. I I agree. You can't ski powder and not have a big smile on oh, your face dude. if you know how to do it. Like Getting <laughs> that cold smoke in your face yep. is just it's. I'm excited to try this. Anyone who hasn't done it, I highly suggest saving money and wrecking for half a day just to experience it. Like, well, and you're wrecking on snow. Yeah, I mean, I, I know mean, plenty it, of people get hauled you can, out, but you you're can wrecking get on hurt, snow. But that's when you're being stupid, ridiculous, trying to do shit. But just wrecking, figuring it out, it's not bad. It'll be all right. Yeah. But there's nothing like it. That's one of the best parts oh, of man. Braden being in Boy Scouts. They take a ski trip every year. Yeah. God, so I got to be one of the chaperones this year, which was. Fucking awesome. 
I rode in the back of the bus, laid down the whole way. Because I bartended. <laughs> my seat. Dude, I bartended the whole night before, you know, so I get up. Called it. There was no seats left. Kick some little kid out and of the no, seat. No, there was no <laughs> there was no seats. And I go to get on the bus, and I'm like, I'm going to have to sit next to some kid straight up and down the entire trip. And then our bus driver, Bill, he's like, hey, well, this back seat folds out. Click, oh, flops nice. it down. I was like. Perfect. And the, all the bags and the sleeping bags and shit are all back there. I was like, all right, I've laid down, Butter. slept the whole way. Dreamy. <laughs> threw a podcast in. I threw a, I threw a podcast of Tanner Hall, the skier, pro skier yeah. on, all the way down there. So by the time I got there, I was just like, just jacked yeah. to go. You were dreaming <laughs> yeah. about fucking skiing? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to win the X Games today. Yeah, skiing and snowboarding <laughs> is just, I wish I could do it more. It Me just, too. I, we're, we're right in a spot where, like, I wouldn't leave just because of snowboarding, but holy shit, if I could be closer. I, I told Carol I would gladly move to tiny, like, and I just told her about, like, the beach. I would love to, like, I mean, we have three kids, so a tiny house is probably out of the question, but I'd love to go to the beach and work minimally, you know, like, oh, enough to pay yeah, rent. Just and to then, live, and then, and then just to live and longboard up and down the beach every day or to, like, hit their little skate parks and skate, but, in, like, have your bills paid yeah. and just live happily. And then during the winter, kind of like how we do in this tiny yeah, town. Like, well, exactly. And then go, in the winter, go find a fucking little mountain town. Oh, dude! And live a tiny house you know there and just shit? snowboard all year, or ski all oh, year. You oh, you know how much shit I would give Caleb when he was? I mean, he still he's got a great job now, but like when he was yeah. just you know growing up, fucking living Had life. Job, I was yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing? You should be living out yeah. on that mountain. Running a goddamn snow groomer Why from not? three in the morning to seven. I would gladly and do that. And then snowboarding until you're ready to fucking call it a day. Like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I, I would have done that. I don't know why I didn't think of that before I started. I would have totally kids, done that. Dude, they put you up in a cabin. Yeah, exactly. Like, you'd live out there. Mm-hmm. You'd get your weekends off. I mean, I'm sure after a while you'd be like, no, when I'm they not get a ski, like, day, but. You look at Showdown when they shut it down early. They get a ski after. Oh, dude. Like, that's, it, when, four o'clock, you still got daylight. I remember my eighth grade ski trip. We showed up. We got there pretty early. Like, we were there for over an hour before it even opened. But I remember seeing this chick. She was an instructor. But I was, like, the only one even paying attention to the mountain while we're there. You know, most of, most of my friends are hitting on the other hot eighth grade girls from different towns. <laughs> and, like, yeah. I'm sitting there. This chick is, like, do, hitting these jumps, hitting three, doing 360s, you know, tail grabs, just badass shit. She so happens to be the one and this other guy leading our group. And mm. I picked it up right away. Like, and she, after that, she kind of took me aside. And she's like, you need to start working on, try to jump and do a 180 into your fakie and then come back. So, like, I worked on that all day because I asked her. I was like, how do you do a 360? I was an eighth grader. Yeah. She was hot. She snowboarded. Like, <laughs> that's everything I was ever dreaming of back then. But, dude, yeah. Just, I'd love to live That's what I was trying to tell Caleb. I was like, you would get to do so much board and you'd get sick of it. Like, I'd love to. I've always said I'd, I'd or, love to run the snowcat for, like, Red Bull and build the jumps. Oh, dude, I think that'd be, like, literally a dream job to would. be able to just up there. and. Dude, there's nothing saying you couldn't. No, you're right. I bet you get paid pretty good. If if you're not paid good, you're paid accordingly, but you get to live the way that Right. Like I said, See, that's I mean, the biggest thing. I, like, I'd gladly I'd gladly move to a fucking shitty shack on the beach to live yeah. on the beach and longboard every day to like right. to be able to like if I still pay my bills with graphic design the way that I do. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, what I, I mean. can take like, my iPad out on the beach and make money. It's easy to just you know, in a town like we live in, it's, mm-hmm. I don't want to say it's easy. It's, it's hard. No. There's definitely shit that's hard, but that, you can do that in a small town. But you I'm, can just live if that's what you want to do. It's just that Malta is, I love Malta. That's why I haven't left. I want to raise my family here, but. Same. Like you're saying, that's not out of the question, you know, like, I guess, yeah, it might be a little more expensive to live on a beach. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to have the money to just travel all the time, oh, too, man. but i now that I work for myself, I can honestly say I've been way happier. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, oh, I, I did feel, that for a while, man. Like, there's that's the way to do it work for yourself. Like, there's definitely times it sucks. For I mean, you're oh, definitely worried. Like, sometimes you're like, shit, I hope they pay me or this, right? You get that done, or you're not getting work. You got to be self motivated, like, but but at least I still get to hang out with my kids way more yeah, than dude. before. See, that's like Bra- when Braden was raised as a kid, he was at a babysitter. From nine to five or mm-hmm. eight, eight to five, every fucking day. Yeah, I mean for five days a week at least, yeah. you know. And then I bartended on the weekend, so I mean I'm, I was gone. Yeah. 
Well, see, that's like the thing with this job I got now. It's great. I definitely wouldn't. I don't regret getting it. No, you. But I job. definitely compromised. Like, like today, I seen Ivy this morning. I stayed up till two thirty putting together her power wheels. We got her, but then I seen her this morning for an hour. Then I was gone. Like fucking all day long i got home like it was awesome yeah. she was screaming at me as i was pulling up it was sweet but yeah. i only got to see her for a couple hours before she went to bed little girl like, fuck, she, turned, shit, man. she turned five today yeah isn't that wild and tomorrow she's gonna be five in one day five in a day i'm not gonna get the fucking like that's one thing that sucks about this job i get the weekends mm-hmm. off but at least you're still home you could be working an oil rig job right. while you're fucking gone for ever and i get that around here because there's plenty of guys that go around and make doctor's wages mm-hmm. doing the oil rig. But then again, would I trade doctor's wages for all the time I get to spend with my kids and my dogs and my that's and skate I, every day and stuff? I, w- I wouldn't trade that for the that's world. That's why I never fucking uh, went and did that. Like, don't shit. get, yeah, don't get too caught up making a living and forget to live. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, go ahead. Sure, you drive a sweet fucking new pickup, but right. I could give a shit less. I drive oh, a sweet dude. old pickup. Yeah, and being the per- kind of person I am, there's no way I could have done that without fucking being completely miserable oh it'd break my i did money i did i worked on the railroad for a long time with the rail welders i've been in tons of arguments about that fucking money is not worth that shit to me it's not and i don't get me wrong there's definitely months that i go uh hey landlord i'm gonna be five days ten days late with the rent are you okay with that or i'm putting on a show on this day can you can i pay you after that and yeah she's been pretty flexible with me and awesome that way and I mean, I still rent. I don't own my house, but I yeah, still, I, mean, I still have a roof yeah. over my head, and I live happily. That's one thing about this tiny town that sucks. You would think living in such a small place, buying a house, wouldn't be so fucking expensive. Well, it's not compared to Bozeman standards, but well, yeah, I know that. I didn't mean it like, but like yeah. the housing everywhere. I'm sure, but you would think living in a small town, you'd be able to get a house that didn't cost fifty thousand dollars repairs that what do you, make it what do you think to, of you know, like, like if they were to ever implement universal ba- basic income have you ever heard any much about no, it no not at all that's the first so, I've ever heard so what it is is like they say that the, like this would be a government plan to where they'd give like every, everything's every equal every person no no they just give every person let's say a thousand dollars a month no matter who you are if you're homeless or you're not but it would pay for your rent it'd pay for your, like it'd take care of your basic necessities they pay you enough to take care of your basic necessities. So instead of you having to go bust your ass at McDonald's, you could actually become the artist that you want to become. Or you could become, you know. Right. Or maybe you just skateboard all day or whatever it is. But a lot of people say that maybe it would bring out the most creative, you know, and stuff. And actually, they're like, well, where would all the money come from? And apparently, the people that are, like, kind of spearheading it say that the money could actually already be there for the amount of taxes we pay and, what you know, and the way that it would work out. But that way, you wouldn't be scrambling to pay rent every month. Like, you'd actually make money to be able to put into your business. Or you'd actually, you know. Mm-hmm. And would America be better that way or not? I don't, I don't know. I don't, you might have a lot know. of junkies. I mean, it'd be. But here's what some of the places that are doing something like that. Instead of having a lot of junkies, they don't make, they don't have a drug war. Right. They have, like, you go to the clinic and you can do your heroin there. They're not going to give you enough to make you overdose. But you can go shoot up. You can do your heroin. But they will also offer you every bit of treatment to try and help yourself out and figure out what the root of the problem is. Like, did your girlfriend dump you? Did your whatever, you know? Like, right. they will try to actually help you out in front of a doctor instead of somebody living on the street that can't pay rent, that can't, right. you know? And what they do is they help, they help them actually get an apartment or a job. And they're like, well, who wants to have some junkie working for them? Well, what happens is the government will pay, like, half their wages. Say, if I want to hire them for $10 an hour... Government the government five. pays five. So I get a guy for five. I mean, then how much work do I expect out of him? You know, right. not, not much, but you have a Let lot be better feeling $5 about. dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah, you have a lot better feeling about them as a human to try and bring them up, too, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a nicer society that way that, like, yeah. I'm not saying it would or wouldn't work. I don't know enough examples, but I've listened to enough things on it, and it's a little crazy I mean, just to think what, about. Yeah, but I mean, just from what you've told me, it sounds like it's got its ups and downs but for sure i mean you're gonna I mean, have the, guys like I, i'm not paying for that right. guy they're doing this blah. yeah it's just i was you're gonna paying say that like, fucking taxes anyway you would almost need to everybody like, start gets at a certain like you just said like there's always like 
goes. Yeah, but how do you people, differentiate? Literally. How do you know that that guy, that junkie, might not have been the greatest fucking guitar player oh, or, or right? bucket and stick player that you ever met in your life if he wasn't struggling? Right. And then if yeah, they if true. they had an opportunity to go get their help with their addictions instead of getting thrown in a fucking jail, mm-hmm. I mean you're putting them in a cage to because they like to make their mind feel a little different, right? Which is crazy to me, you know. Like, I get yeah. I get that you shouldn't have crackhead junkies out stealing all kinds of shit and whatnot, but like, would they be if they had that money? Or they and here's what they do with the, with the what they do when they it's hard, it's this hard is in like say. Switzerland uh, I want to say Sweden Dude, or Switzerland it, if it's over there it probably works well what they did with it is Those instead of instead hard. of charging for the drugs the drugs are free the help is free you go to the hospital you know like so here was an analogy this guy gave um, now that booze is legal you don't see any booze dealers trying to kill each other right no shit dude I've you got Jack, Jack Daniels that. doesn't walk up to Jim Beam and shoot him Right, I've always thought but that. But back in the Al Capone days, Al Capone was murdering people left and right for booze. Oh, yeah. And so if you That's took... all the prohibition did. If you took and made it free... crime. Or, you know... And here's another thing. Back then, all they had was moonshine. The reason why is because if you're trying to do it illegally... It. Well, no, if you're trying to do it illegally, you're going to try and pack as much alcohol content as you could in that trunk. Mm-hmm. As com- so if you had cases of beer, you can't pack that much. But if you pack moonshine and it's 100 proof... You yeah. can get a lot of people fucked up for a small amount. Mm-hmm. So that's the same with the drug war. Not everybody wants, like, the highest potency pot or cocaine or whatever they're doing. Like, that's just what you get from here. They cut it down. If you knew that you could have a little bit and still do your fucking daily routine, you'd have that little, the smaller amount as a, po- you know, like, you'd have a right. beer. You'd have a beer as opposed to a shot of fucking tequila. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which is one way to look at it, but yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure. And I'm regurgitating like said, something I'm I've sure said. It works over there, whatever. What? Well, I mean, it works and it doesn't work in certain cases. But yeah. like I was reading a thing about schools over there. They have like half as long as a school year, and each school day is like half as long as they are over here. And yeah. Kids are testing higher than they do. Well, how do in you America? expect a little kid to sit still? Like a kid from the age of six on to sit still for eight hours. Well, not only that, like... That's not that's not the way that your human body oh, is supposed no. to be wired. You're not supposed to sit in a fucking desk. No, dude, I think, you'd almo- I think you almost learn less being forced to... And I know that because the first classes I went to for this job I had now, it was all... A, a five-day class was crammed into three days. Like, I had learned what I needed to learn, I guess, to get it. That's but the test. second time I went was a normal week. Dude, I learned twice as much going to class for three hours less a day. Yeah. Like, I remembered more of it. I took more of it in. Like, For sure. I, I, yeah, when I watched that thing about that, the schools over there, like, they're testing higher than any school in America, too, and they go to school for half the fucking time. There's a, I don't even know where the place is, but I, I'd heard this, that they're letting their students go to, they're letting them go put in their time when they want. And each person's on their own timeline. Like, the goal is to pass this grade. The goal is to this, but you're not set right. to get it done from eight to five. You can go and like now that there's computer learning and whatnot, you can go and do it at, at midnight till mm-hmm. whenever. And if you pass yours in a one point five years as opposed to one year, you still move on to that next grade. You just you know you're not right, but you're still accomplishing you're the same. Am- you're accomplishing the same amount of work. You're not just forcing it through right. and still getting like oh shit he barely passed. You're getting yeah, people no shit, whip. dude. I mean, it makes sense. Like, if I'm going to learn Adobe Illustrator and how to be a graphic designer, and I was told I have to learn it this week. Yeah, you or got I can become, Monday to learn this. Or I can right. become an expert by whenever, you know, like you, oh, yeah. you learn better and you learn better technique that way. I agree. And different people have different paces. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, I wasn't great in school, but I, mean, either, I know but one I, thing. I fucking didn't like being there. Oh, Me neither. Fuck it. That's why as soon as I had the option to do the, the what did they call it? Work study? Work study. I did. And, like, a lot of them teachers didn't like it because, honestly, a lot of the kids didn't work. They would just, just find fucking, yeah. that oh, was I a good excuse a to get out of school at 1 o'clock, you know. But, well, the first time I had got it was after Kelsey had got pregnant. So, like, I was actually working. But, yeah. fuck, I 
I almost enjoyed school more. I'm not just saying that either. Like, yeah. fuck, I knew going to school that day, I only got to be here till 1 o'clock, and then I get to go work and make some money. Yeah. Like, It drags on. And, well, and the problem is, is not only they have them for eight hours a day, then they turn around and they give them two hours of homework to go home too. Right. And for a kid, like, even at Braden's age, at 10 and 11 years old, you know, 12 years old, for fuck's sakes, do you think oh, that dude. kid wants to sit till dark working on math? Well, I know, and then and then you, you get, don't think he wants to learn how to build a fucking yeah. campfire or even mow the lawn right. or what? Like, like a you, skill? You got two kinds of kids too. You got the kinds of kids like that want to be successful in school. You know, they want to have yeah. the best grades they can have, so they're gonna go home and do that shit. They're gonna fucking put themselves through that two three hours of work studying into mm-hmm. the night. And then you got the other kids like I was who knew I could do just just enough to pass. Same with me. And then go do that shit, like you're saying. I'd rather go fishing, or I'd rather fucking go branding during the I spring. I was smart or... enough to pass with minimal effort, but, like, Braden, Braden's was, almost like... a straight-A student, and he uh, but and he will do his homework, but I feel so damn bad for well, him. That's, yeah, I wasn't but, saying that's a but, bad thing. That's but I mean, what I mean. Like, I do, though. Got like got kids I, that I you know s- probably don't want to be doing that shit. No, he but doesn't. But they're going to do it because... But he cares about his grade. Yeah. And I feel so fucking a, that's bad for him. a good quality to have, too, but... It is, but I feel so damn bad for him having to, you know, like, uh, how many fuck, you got to do 50 to 100 math problems every night yeah. to get it, to oh. fucking, what do you, get, like, tell me how many people come out of school. I was just going to say. those 100 math problems, I mean, like. I've been out of school now for eight especially years, this and stage I don't think I've day ever age, fucking done algebra a day in my life. I since. could Google any <laughs> one of those equations if I needed well, to. Well, yeah, I mean, nowadays you got, you can get any answer you need, but, like. I haven't used... I, I use more shit from home ec nowadays than I do <laughs> You're anything damn right else you do. I fucking learned in home school. Home ec and dude. shop. I, right? Yeah. Let's take a pause real quick. I'm going to grab another beer and run outside. Way, way, way. So we're uh, we're back, and more Noah and I started talking about aliens and ancient civilization, because that's usually where we go. <laughs> ancient people were way more advanced than we are today, and we just don't know it. I think there's a good possibility that we can't build shit as good or the same way as they could back then. That's the weirdest thing to me is that our architecture is not the same. People get so caught up in thinking like we are the upper echelon of human beings. Like we've got it fucking going on. Like I'm not saying our technology isn't great, but they might not have had the internet or whatever. But I mean, like they had a a knowledge of the stars too. Maybe they didn't need the internet to fucking communicate with people halfway across the world dude Who like knows? i i don't think they did i mean there's well, like so much evidence out there that there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat so you never oh, know there might have yeah. been a way of them well, i mean maybe it wasn't been, radio waves we've maybe been it was taught cross. something since the time you start get go to the school like this is how shit happens this is how it fucking works but the thing dude, that blows dude. me away is like personal history even 200 years ago of what they were using 200 years ago was primitive as fuck compared to what we have today. Oh, yeah. Even 100 years ago, dude. Like, if you would have told them, over, Oh, it's a little over 100 years, but we were still horse and buggy if traveling you told around. Them you could instantly watch a video conversation of somebody across the world. It'd be magic. They'd claim oh, it was dude. magic. Or even airplanes, you know, before they started. Oh, yeah. Well, just think about when the car was invented. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people said, went from needing a horse and having to feed it all the time, or you couldn't get anywhere, to having a car that used fuel to yeah. fucking run. Like, and just think about, well, you're older than me, but like, I remember growing up listening to a tape cassette of White Snake. Yeah, like that's what I listened to. And since then, we had the Walkman, then we had iPad or iPods. Yeah. And now those things, if you see a guy walking around with an iPod, you're like, Jesus Christ, let's nice get with iPod. the picture, dude. Like, what Nin- are you do? 1999 called. They want their iPod yeah, back. Like, don't you have an iPhone? It's the same. <laughs> like, Jesus, you're wasting your time. But The amount of memory that they can save on a, on a chip of oh, something man, now just is... Yeah, just in the past 10 years, like, technology for us is... But I think back then they were, like, just all the fucking giant monolithic structures and temples around the world i think tell you that in plain sight but we've been taught something since we were how old that you're like yeah that's really cool but people built that we like, don't we don't know hell no we don't, dude like like graham hancock always says that we're a, we're a race of amnesia mm-hmm. we don't like what do we remember from just a 
few thousand years ago. We right. don't remember anything else, but yet people were around longer than that. Oh, man. And you telling me that we were just all running around in loincloths hunting yeah. fucking buffalo? No, no, we weren't. No. You know that there's that thing wired in your brain to advance. Like, every morning you wake up and you want to get better mm-hmm. and improve and you want something better. Well, like, and, like he said, like, history repeats itself. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, we have evidence that people were of the Stone Age, you know, hunter-gatherer people, yep. Neanderthals or whatever. But before that, we are... Are we just to assume that that's right when humans started? I mean, that's as far back as we can go is when humans started walking the earth or humanoid creatures. But if you're talking, but like today, like if every, I mean, if an asteroid hit and wiped our little stick out, it wouldn't even look oh, like there's a town no. here in Malta. If if an asteroid hit like they claim could, mm-hmm. well, I mean, all the evidence was in that one podcast I watched. But, dude, we would yep. be wiped back to the Stone Age in no time. Yeah. It would take no time at all. You know wireless communication's gone right away. You know that, like, I mean, and who's, you know anybody that could get it up and running again? No, that's, yeah, we would be, I mean, we'd be out without communication, without a doubt, but even to that, like, think think how modernized just our country has got. Like, Mm -hmm. obviously, we still live in a place where, me and you could still go outside and build a fire out yeah. of nothing if we absolutely had to. Yeah, go could, hunt for food. Yeah, and we could fish. figure it out. We could hunt and fish. You know, we could try to stay alive if that happened, but the cities and shit. It'd be famine and free for all. I mean, all. yeah, you would just be, it'd be fucking chaos. But then again, you think what winter would be for us. I mean, you'd have oh, to build dude, one hell like, of a shelter up here to. Oh, we would. I'm, yeah, it would, live I'm not saying below. it wouldn't get that way around here but for yep. scraps of food here and there, but. At least we would. It would be in us. Like we've yep. tried it before. Yeah, we've hunted. We've, or at least yeah. we've we've grown up in a place where getting up for school to go make sure your fucking car started when it's fifty no below. Shit. Like, yeah, you know how to deal with. Some yeah, of it. you know how. Yeah. At least you've been in it. But we have some clothing to protect us from it too. Yeah, I like when you, we came back into this. I just think. I just we were so much more advanced than we've been taught and give the ancient civilizations credit for. You said who, I mean, there's a good chance we could be just sitting here as a non-player character in a simulation. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's uh, that even like the to, Even the top scientists, some of them are saying that. They're like, well, we don't have anything to disprove that. Right. And you imagine, well, there's like... There's tons of theories of that makes sense, and once your brain gets to thinking about it, that's like what we were saying with, like, different dimensions and shit, dude. How do we know that if we couldn't use the rest of our brain, we could just hop in and out of different dimensions and there's a be there's a place it's like by I want to say it's by Nashville they're literally trying to figure out if they can open a portal to another div- dimension right now they're like firing I don't know if it's electrons or whatever it is at a wall that they say is completely impenetrable but if there's an electron that shows up on the other wall they're like it's proof that there's other that dimensions there's and there that's dimension. what they're but these are some of the top scientists in the world like Doing that kind of shit, so obviously, oh, man. I, mean, I think there is like, why the hell they think circles around us? So I mean, why what the, the hell, hell could you sit here and say that that's not a possibility? You no, know, I mean, like nobody can still say, explain dreams. That's who's what, to say they haven't already discovered that shit? But with the way our government and our world works, they're just not fucking telling us. How could you control people yeah, if if we knew there, that yeah. there was? another dimension that if we didn't like it we could be like well fuck I'm gonna go to the third dimension that place is rocking right now dude you know, what's like, been creeping me out lately is uh, I'll get a text message from somebody about something and all of a sudden I scroll Facebook and there's my and fucking, fucking it's it's an ad from Walmart yes, or something it's in your and I'm feet. like I've never even talked about it it, it was a text message to Carol about something totally random and all dude, of a sudden I'm like oh boy I fucking know exactly what you mean dude I've even had it to where I've said it Yep, me too. And the next time I get on Amazon, boom, there it is. And it's like, something hey, like, I really want to get one of these, or you're just talking about something, yep. and then all of a sudden it's right there, like, hey, check out this deal on this. Like, what yep. the fuck is that all about, dude? It's creepy as hell. Oh, I just think all that goes and shows I just figured everything we, we know and do is controlled by something. I just figured that we we have no uh, privacy anymore. No privacy and you just pretty much left. might as well just think that well, think about it. Anytime you get a new phone or you download an app, how many people honestly sit and read through the whole thing that you have to agree to? Yeah. With the way 
society works nowadays. It, it, fucking internet, everything's so fast. You know, we just expect it. Boom. Yeah, you don't want. Like, I've been around one guy in my life that actually read through the whole agreement. And at <laughs> two minutes in, I'm just thinking, like, what the hell are you doing? Let's fucking play Call of Duty. Like, come on, come on. Come on, I want to know. I don't care if they know your mother's maiden name. Right. What, like, but yeah, I mean, you. As soon as you get a fucking iPhone, you sign your privacy away. They, as soon as you agree all to take use off. their service, like, I watched that one video. The guy he traveled around the city all day with. A phone that he had turned off in an air, airplane mode, and then another phone that wasn't even connected to a mobile service, just a phone on airplane mode all day. And the phone that wasn't even connected to the service gathered more data than the one that was hooked up to Verizon or whatever. You shouldn't me. No. Wow. Even down to the when he would get out of a car, like in the data it would collect, it would be like car stopped, opening door, like. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. To know that they can figure that much out? Yeah, I mean, it's... Well, I mean, you look at even Snapchat if you want. You can go on and see all your friends, where they're all sitting, where it's all, like... I mean, they give you that option where it says you can block that, but I'm sure... You probably think you're blocked, but all your friends are like, oh, here he is, trying to block himself. Yeah. (laughs) Look at right here, but there he is. What the (laughs) fuck? We it's all think nobody can see you, but everyone's looking at you with that sign over your face. Yeah. <laughs> but he thinks he's being sneaky. <laughs> that's that's fucking weird, man. That I mean, and now they can emulate other people's faces. You can literally like take a picture with a what now is an an older iPhone, you know, and and face swap, you yeah. know, or even like just imagine what it will be if nothing happens or derails us a hundred years from now. Oh, I know. From the difference, a hundred years ago, we're riding horse yeah, and buggy. That's what. I, that's and what. And the very first Harley Davidson barely moved, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. To uh, to now, look at the whole fucking difference, man. That's it's insane to me. Well, yeah, I mean, and like like we were talking with all these giant structures and temples around the road. A lot of them, the locals say they didn't build them. They yeah. Say, they say they were there when, for as long as they could remember. So like that's what you were just saying like who's to say if nothing derails us or something happens a hundred years from now Mm -hmm. like who's to say people back then weren't fucking flying all over the universe and this was just one pit stop like fucking star wars tells us it is like or any other goddamn space i feel like uh you know like like i should build a monolith a big (laughs) Well, like dude, just make it my life mission to go. Well, like, you know, and build a giant rock structure that's going to last yeah, for No shit, I can't remember what podcast number it was, but the one we watched that you had me watch. Yeah. Um, for those of you that guys, that one lady, Graham Hancock yeah. and Randall Carlson. Is that watch the one you're it. About? Yep. Well, fuck, it'll change your Rogan. goddamn life. Yep. But that or one, even reading Graham Hancock's books, they're yeah, insane. That one chick claimed that the oldest civilizations ever were right here in montana idaho yeah. like she claims you know all those badass rock structures you drive by when you're traveling through the states that you're just like wow that's really fucking cool those are actually ancient ancient things people build you yeah know? it's, like, it's wow they're just so old that older than know. anything we've ever found you know yep and that one part in that podcast made sense like when they were saying how some of them different cracks in them or whatever like that's not natural that couldn't happen yep that was put there those are two pieces put together like it's insane it's weird to think i mean if a guy could have a time machine if you if you could have a time machine where would you go september would you go forward or back dude i was just about to be a smart ass and go back to my fucking (laughs) anyway i think i'd go forward Maybe. Dude, I don't know, but just about talking about I wouldn't mind going back and seeing when the pyramids were built either. I was just going to say, I wouldn't mind going back before we think we know as far and see how all of this shit was made. If you go back to when the pyramids were built and you, you, it's just dinosaurs marching them up there like, right? Huh, no wonder they could get them that high. No shit. <laughs> well, apparently we tamed dinosaurs back yeah, the day. Great, That's how we could do Just it. like the Flintstones. Dinotopia was yeah. actually a thing. Oh, Guys are flying around pterodactyls. There's fucking. Barney Rubble. Holy shit. Oh no shit. They tame pterodactyls. Yeah, I don't know. 
That would be weird. Either that or we had the technology, like some people think, to just pick up giant fucking things and levitate them over and set them down exactly where we needed. And we had lasers that we could just fucking cut well, that, anything. We just put it in a computer and it cut stone well, we, we exactly have, how we We have that it. now, but just not on that big yeah, scale Yeah, just yet. not on that scale. Yeah. But it's getting closer. Well, like that temple in India. It's the only temple that we've ever discovered that we didn't they didn't bring rock to it to build it. They carved it out of mm-hmm. a mountain. Just and, like, even today, that one guy, like, laid it out using math and everything. He's like, there's no fucking way we could move that much rock. Even just trying to take the rock out of it. That's not designing all the little shit and everything mm-hmm. into that. There's no way we could even do that today. And not accurately either. The way yeah. That- and the architecture of it. I mean, you're building it out of a mountain. You want to build a bridge across it. You got to scoop the whole fucking mountain around that one part. Yep. And, and then none like, of the stone is anywhere to be found. Like for, for them to like. You're telling me Stone Age people did that shit, and, they and just, then they managed to haul the stone thousands slaves. of They're miles. They're saying, away. "Oh, it was slaves." Fuck that. You telling me you could have that many slaves that wouldn't eventually get pissed off at that one dude and not have an uprising? Yeah, exactly. Or or the uh, the in that video, the one guy, some. One of the rulers over there at one point tried to have it destroyed and basically dedicated an army of three, 4,000 people yeah. to destroy, and they barely made a dent in it. There's one of them. I can't remember what the span. library was, but there was a library that had all these old secrets, and they burned them. Oh, yeah. They, They're like, they don't like, want us why to know that shit. Why the fuck shit? did you? What, I mean, well, apparently in the Grand Canyon, some guy, one of the first guys to map the whole thing out or whatever, he found a burial chamber in one of the deep caves in one of the sh- restricted areas of Grand Canyon where oh, you're really? not allowed to go that had shit from, like, over in Egypt. The same type of shit. Huh? Like, the same people were over here building the same things, but but that's something that they don't want us to know. So he got kicked out of there. T- they took everything he ever had credit-wise, like, basically buried his name in history to where no one would ever know that ever fucking happened. The weird thing to me is, like, who's they and how do you get into that club? Oh, dude, I've, you know? I've got so deep into so many me conspiracies too, right? on uh, who the hell they and there's are. So, and there's so much that's probably bullshit, too, because just some punk kid in his garage making a fucking YouTube video. But right. I sure like to keep myself, before I go to bed or up at night sometimes, like, if I really fall down that rabbit hole, you're oh, like, holy dude. shit. That's a deep hole to <laughs> travel is. down. And you, I will say that hole I traveled down has been the first night since I was probably seven, eight years old where I was actually fucking terrified one night. <laughs> yeah. Terrified, man. You just went, holy shit. Like, scared out of my mind. Like, got into the whole Illuminati theories yeah. one night, you know? And, and. There's some weird shit if you want to. Played this one start. video that was like, this is the horn the Illuminati blows before they start their demonic rituals, you know? And it's just this weird kind of like foghorn sounding thing, you know? Whatever. It's only like 45 seconds long. Boom. Auto play to the next theory about them. So I'm listening. All of a sudden I hear that horn. Uh-huh. And at first I'm thinking like, huh, it must have been like the heater turned on or off something. Whatever. A few minutes go by, I hear, brrr, hear it again. And this time it's clear as day. And the buddy I'm with hears it too. And like we look at each other like, okay, I'm not imagining shit. You fucking heard that. So, you know, whatever goes by, it's to the point where both of us were grown men or so we think. We're not going to be like, I'm fucking freaked out right now, you know? So it gets to the point. You scared? I'm not scared. You scared? I'm going to go check it out. Uh, You're going to come with me though, right? Like, But at that time, the dog. Like, as soon as it happens, we look at the dog gets up, and this dog is, like, the friendliest dog you've ever met in the world. I've never even seen him, like, play with another dog rough. Like, he'd rather sit there and let the dog hump him to death before he even acted like a mean dog. Yeah. He freaks the fuck out. Mm. Like, growling, running up and down <laughs> the hallway, barking. So, of course, I am freaked out, you know? I'm like, Jesus, like, get back here. Knock it off. Like Sit on my lap. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Well, you know, the time goes by, you know, I'm still freaked out, ready to go home. So I go and open the door to go out to my truck. And as soon as I open it, something jumped off the fucking gate of the fence. Like, I don't know if it was a cat. I've tried to replicate the sound tons of times. Can't do it. 
but something jumped off of the gate, rattled the fuck out of the gate, shook the fence. And as soon as that happens, like two, three seconds go by, I hear, whoo, whoo, owl. Oh, yeah. And I watched the fourth kind back in the day. So I'm like, fuck. Owls freak me out. And we got dude. them out here outside of our oh, house yeah. like crazy, man. So, like, I'm worried as hell. You know, I'm paranoid as fuck. I'm like, I watched something I shouldn't have. They're already on to me. They know it. <laughs> like, they're already watching me, planning to. Dude, yeah, I'm not even <laughs> lying. Driving home that night. I probably looked like a fucking call spaz, me. you know. I'm like looking around, like they're you know, here's something me. weird. We're, and like I never really have this that, it was that kind bad, of thing. Dude. I was, I was in the I was in the grocery store today, and I am ninety percent sure there was a dude following me, and he was he was in there like working and doing his thing, but I was in there and like I'm I'm at the meat department. And I don't know if he's like doing like customer research or what he's, or, and he like follows me over and he's kind of like looking around the meat department as I'm looking and I you know I'm like glance and I look. I walk down to the cheese. He takes, like, two more steps down and, like, stands there for, like, not right by me, but, like, shadowing me. And then I turn and I head down, like, the coffee aisle and, like, by the cereal. And I'm standing there and I see him walk down. You know how, like, Kmart or whatever, they'll have those people that watch you to see if you're stealing something. Yeah. Or whatever. Which, I ain't fucking stealing shit. I'm a fucking grown man shopping right? for my kids. Anyway, and I'm standing there and I'm looking at the cereal and, like, I kept seeing him, like, look at me and that, you know. What the fuck? And I'd, like, really? I'm, like, what the fuck? And this is, like, the only time I've ever been, like, even slightly free. So I looked up at this thing, and, I like, I went to reach for it, and he kind of, like, turned his head. And then I turned, and I walked. And as I took, like, two steps like this, I'd had my phone, and I look, and he took two more steps, fucking heading toward, like, going to fall out the rail. And so then I go over, and I'm at the produce. And pretty soon he's over there, like, he'd never buying anything. He's there working. And he's, like, Dude. picking up he's picking up an onion, like, kind of looking at me. And what finally, I'm just like, really? I'm like, I didn't even go get my milk. I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Jesus what the fuck Christ, is going on here? Dude. I don't what know if he's hell? following me thinking that, like, because I wear a backwards hat, I'm going to steal something or what's going on. Jesus but Jesus Christ, that's fucking weird. Yeah, it was very weird. And I've never had, I've never had anything. I mean, like, you've seen, you know, like you go into a mall store where there's somebody that sits and watches, you know. I've never like, even noticed so, that. Uh, I have. I, I like, I keep an eye out. But this was. What this wasn't fuck? coincidence of him just walking behind me at the same. What did you do? Yeah, exactly. What the hell? That's weird, man. It was a little strange. That's especially being in a small town. Like, what the hell? He wasn't from about? here. Whoever he was, he he was like he corporate. Had, yeah, corporate. I don't know if he was just like maybe his, it's like South Park told. Us and the worst part about it with Walmart. So I go up, I go up and I go to try and get some yogurt and I go to scan the fucking yogurt in, into my phone. Albertson's app's down. Won't fucking, like, flat won't give me the deal, you know? So, I'm like, fuck it. I ain't buying yogurt. I turn around and walk the other way. What the hell, dude? Weird. Yeah, real weird. That is fucking weird, <laughs> man. Jesus, now you got my brain just spinning like a top. Yep. It's mind-boggling. There's strange shit. There's, uh, there's strange people all over the place. and I mean, we probably do live in a pretty normal world once we all think about it, but why is it that the human brain likes to go to the weird part you know like it's because you you never know what's out there it's being held down by something well for one you look up at the stars one time and like you never know what the fuck is there or what that even is i was gonna say like if you can look up at the sky and honestly sit there and tell yourself there's nothing else out there that's pretty naive if you could see it the way that we can see it here in malta montana you know like well yeah that's true too like i guess not everyone gets the big sky like we do but You've seen pictures, I'm sure. Yeah, people have. holy shit! Like, like you said, you got the internet. Go on and Google some pictures of the stars and the galaxy that just our cameras can take, and try to say that there's nothing else out there. That's ridiculous. That's what creeps me out. Is like since like before 1990, we couldn't hardly reach beyond that. And then, oh man! And now they can like they'll expand it out so far to you're like, holy dude, we're not even long, up. Like yeah. we're a, how long did we're it a grain take? of sand on an yeah, ocean beach? For the, the what was the fuck? How far away? I can't even remember. But how long did it take for those photos for the Hubble telescope to develop because of light well, years? Like, they took them at a certain time, but, like, it was so far away. It took that, that long, long to, get here. to get here. Like, fuck, I can't remember the numbers, but it's... I wish we were sending one out every year it's in a insane. different direction. I think oh, it's, man. It's crazy to me that more of our funding isn't towards that kind of thing. Well, according to a lot of the theories, there's multiple secret space programs that we have no idea. NASA's just the one that the people get to know about, you know, like... It was creepy, that girl that came with the UFO thing, like, 
Well, that's important. We started talking, and, and like I brought up a couple things, and she's like, "Oh, that's exactly what's going on." Blah blah blah, and she'd go in, and I'm like, "Huh, dude, yeah." Not it, that she's an, just because she is an author doesn't yeah. mean she's an authority on it, but it was that's so weird. To, she believes in you know to hear someone else say it would be kind of crazy, yeah. but I gotta take another break real quick. Knock on wood. We're getting deep tonight. We're back, Montarctica. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, talking much. We'll get, uh, we'll hit aliens, we'll hit, we hit pyramids. We got it all. Pyramids, <laughs> aliens, now we're deep into I just took music, Noah, sound theory. I just took Noah down a deep, uh, holy. They changed the standardized tuning back in the day theory. There's, it's another one of these, like, I love sitting awake, whether, whether I believe them or not, you know, Still, I love opening my to, mind to watch some of these things. It's like, fun to make your brain think about that shit. Yep. And so one of them was the, the standardized tuning of a guitar or, like, all standardized concert tuning. They changed it back in the day to 440, and a lot of it had some Nazi influence. And now it, it hurts is what I talk, so how many vibrations in a second? Basically, as a way to confuse the masses. Is what they say. Throw them off kilter. Yep. But then they... Uh, this 432 that was original, they say, like, rings out the harmony of the universe. Mm -hmm. it's, it's some weird hippy-dippy shit. And who but was like it? like I said, I went was down this big fucking... Bach or... Yeah, Bach, or I think it was Bach. One of those played in a lower, like, a 435 Yeah, but he, he all played time. in a 432, it said. Yeah, but, something like and that. He, and then he's like, and he was a Freemason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he's, it's just a YouTube video, but he's, yeah. a, it's, he's like... He did this, and and he was a Freemason. He's just you do the math, did. like oh no <laughs> shit, okay, maybe four thirty two is the magic fucking number. Yep, it's weird. I it was it's crazy. I I said even... though I I opened that up, and I, after I walked, I fell I fell across that one night, looking at different guitar tuning videos. So that's how I came across on that one. And I was like, huh. well, you're fucking kidding me. So then of course I clicked the next video, and pretty soon I'm into like. The Nazis changed the sound of the fucking vibration of all America's mu everybody's no music, everybody's music, and. And then I'm like, what. huh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm put on my tinfoil hat. And all no, that. shit. <laughs> well, like I was saying before we got back into it, like, even if you're standard tuning a guitar, like, when you get a string in tune with the other one, you can... Feel it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not just a sound. Like, you feel it. You know it's there. Yep. But, I mean, I wonder what half a step down when is. Something rings in a pitch, you know, that, yeah. What do you think? Is half? I think they just said in there half step was like at four thirty or four thirty five. So like damn that. near there. Yeah. I mean, I love. I don't play hardly anything in standard mm -hmm. tuning anymore. Yeah, like I, I half a step down, especially if I'm going to try to sing it. I don't know. It's it's probably got nothing to do with that, but or you know, you tune it a little lower. Feels you better get, to yourself. To yeah, be you can yep. you can hit higher notes, but I don't know. That's crazy. I've never ever heard a theory about that i hadn't either until not. the other night and like i said i was just sitting there on my That's ipad crazy. watching a video of like of how to tune your guitar or whatever mm -hmm. and i was using my fender tuner and my fender tuner like you can select the frequencies so i like i looked at it and there's all these different frequencies and i'm like the hell's the difference frequencies so i type you know that in nah. what about different frequency tuning and then that video popped up and i'm like huh what the hell? 432. <laughs> Let's try it out. Yeah, and so I did, and I Watch. actually enjoy my guitar Your being tuned in 432. Be fucking... I'm just way happier. So Everything's <laughs> in, dude. Everything's in for Travis. He's at yeah. 432 now. Read, read a new song. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't say that it's fixed my life. <laughs> well, you just no, discovered it. You yeah. just wait. Maybe it takes a minute. Maybe all them fucking... After you vibrate at 432 for Shall two years. Months it's... and everything that... <laughs> Yeah, maybe that they know something we don't. Those little, are the guys that are always like, "What are those? What cultures are when that picture bowls? showed when they're rubbing the the batons around the bowls, oh, the making the, the vibrations at four hundred thirty two hertz? Something singing bowl. Yeah, what the hell's the name? Of Whatever one? it was, but you know they were saying all the shit it helps with. Those guys say it helps it's heal people, <laughs> works with anxiety. <laughs> like, yep. And they sit and they listen to this. Nobody says frequency. standard tuning does that shit. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird that the standard would be something that supposedly doesn't help with your mental health. Like they but it was a, why would you, why would they all take, I mean, like, they're going to take it to the government. We need a standardized concert pitch. Right. Because America plays, America been playing <laughs> America, half step low. Yeah. 
And Germany, they're a half step high. They're way out of fucking pitch. They're not even fucking close. We're going 440. Right. <laughs> Compromise. Compromise or we're starting a war. <laughs> 440 or 432. Send the sonic bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Start sending, well, Jesus. We will rattle their buildings apart at 440. We do that shit down, fucking, like, send sound waves into the oceans and shit. Looking for things. Can't believe we haven't been able to befriend a whale yet oh, and dude. learn their language. We have. They're smart as shit. Dude. We like, have. You gotta be able to. We just haven't. I mean, we They're can, just not telling them. I can tell you what, I can connect with my dog pretty damn well. I mean, she's an idiot still, but I can. Oh, man. You know, but could you, like, whales are way smarter. It's weird that we oh, haven't been man. able to figure out. I can figure out Spanish. I can figure out Japanese. I can figure out. How in the hell can't you figure out just I mean, a couple words a whale? We know shit. Like, <laughs> I mean, what the hell's going on, buddy? Yeah. I when don't know, uh, man, when we click this podcast off, remind me to tell you a story about whale noise. Okay. And it's funnier than shit. <laughs> I always love a whale noise story. Dude, I don't know. Like that's funny you say that. Whales and shit. That makes me think about a couple different South Park episodes. <laughs> yeah. Or how, or how the uh, the manatees wrote fucking Family Guy with the idea balls. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, maybe that is the case. <laughs> Have you ever seen a manatee in videos? And this, shit. I've seen one live in Florida. The sea cow. It's the fucking strangest up close oh, animal you ever seen in your They're life. Like aliens. I don't even know how like. The first time I seen this big fucking 10, 12 foot fucking thing that uh, is as twice as wide as this bar, if oh, not yeah, wider, they're huge. float by in this little tank. And I'm looking at it like, Jesus, like the, the, hell the is place that? that Carol's sister lives is called Manatee County. Oh, really? So like there's, they're just in the fucking canals and they're shit. Everywhere, in the huh? Certain ones. I mean, I guess, but the huh. ones that we saw, we went to this, like, I can't remember the name of the. It was a little marina or uh, whatever you call those things. Aquarium. That's what the word I was looking for. And there's a couple in this tank. And, the dude, they're like, looks like just a giant fat dog human. I don't know, like, what oh, you yeah. Like, I seen this one video of this chick that was in kind of shallow water, but kind of looked like a canal. But I thought it was a fucking shark come floating up to her. But it was a manatee. Like, they were They're, out swimming, jumped off their boat or something. She was screaming, all of a sudden, to come up to the surface and was just looking at her. Man, if, uh, it's lucky they're weightless in water, because if you put that fucker on dry land, it'd crush a car. Oh, yeah. It'd crush itself. But, it, yeah, it's just strange. Like that yeah, no shit. There's animals like that on our planet that we, we don't communicate with yeah. nothing. That's crazy. And you telling me that humans are the only thing that have the ability to, like, communicate? No, yeah, they we're no. far from that. Dude. Ever since I watched that video of that guy that fucking taught that one bee, a bee, a fucking insect, he taught it how to roll this ball into a certain circle he'd drawn on this piece of paper. There's like five circles. And he taught it to roll it into this certain one, and and he would give it sugar water. So he taught that bee. Then he put like four or five other bees in with that one. And that bee taught the other five. Which fucking circle to roll uh, the balls into, and they'd get shook. Bees. Yeah, that's visual evidence right in front of you of one something. bee teaching. Yeah, he, he taught that bee. He communicated, and with then him. that bee was like, "If you fucking idiots would roll it over here, you'd get some delicious sugar water." <laughs> like, come on! I've never <laughs> killed a bee since, There's unless it like tried to sting me or did. Me. I've always been like that motherfucker's thinking. He's got something going <laughs> yeah. on. You want to know something funny? I'm not just going to kill him. I, uh, you know how you get those more face- complex than that. Those Facebook ads that come up and like, what's your spirit animal? Like, yeah. take that little quiz. I've never d- taken the quiz. I've never taken spirit. many of them. I took one that was like, what's your spirit animal? My spirit animal was a bee. Was it? Yeah. Dude, I... I was like really hoping for a wolf or yeah, something, I mean, you know, I... really... Ever since watching that, well, I like wouldn't think that's sting so like bad. A bee, like... I guess. No, yeah. It's... They're Fair super enough. fucking intelligent. I mean, I do. It was a ball. obviously a Facebook fucking <laughs> made by Cosmo test I mean, that was on there. Yeah, probably but still does not get your spirit that animal. Video but that's of funny. That bee fucking teaching those other ones. That, that was just insane. Like you think it's an insect? I always knew that like bees communicated with each other in the hive and shit. But seeing them teach something like that in no time too. It was just like do they, this real quick and you'll get. See, prairie cool. dogs talk amongst each other pretty oh, well dude. too. 
everything communicates with the, each other. Yeah, I have to. You Bird, would think. Fucking, everything, yeah, everything. We're just the fucking only ones that make it more complicated, complicated than it has to be. It would be weird once you figure out that, like, I mean, I'm saying, like, 200 years down the road, if they're enlightened enough that we're... Humans aren't just fucking wrecking everything. Oh, man. Like, for our pleasure. Let's, you know. Right. I and, don't know. And don't get me wrong. There's some certain things that when you're wrecking them are pretty fucking fun, you know. Like, I mean, even if it's a campfire or whatever yeah. it is, you know. Like, it'd be weird to think that someday that we got a computer program that suddenly we can talk to the orca. Right. Or the, you know, like. No shit. You don't say. Fucking orcas are the funniest stand-up comedians you ever met yeah, in the ocean. Dude. Who's to say that and doesn't... fucking dolphins, yeah. they're assholes, but... <laughs> yeah, who's to say that doesn't go into that other dimension theory, too? No, just another space. Yeah, what if we're just in fucking the wrong one, where everything talks different? You know, how... I like how they... fucking move to the other one, where... Talk. I heard on another podcast, and he's like, what if, uh... I mean, like... What if they're sitting there going, like... You fucking humans, you pay for your food? You go to work for your food every no day? Shit. Like, our food's free. We swim in the ocean. We eat yeah. things. and like We eat we, shit. And we swim around this beautiful place. Yeah. And exactly like I said. We don't make it complicated. There's just no fucking wind live. down here. There's no, yeah. like, no mosquitoes. Like, <laughs> There's nothing bad. Sharks. We fucking sharks are dickheads. Yeah. But Watch out for the other ones that try to eat each other. You still got to worry about those <laughs> ones. But other than that, just fucking live life down here. Like a, I know, like what we've did, we've explored what ten, fifteen percent of the o- world's oceans. I like I don't know the actual percentage, but that's all we've been able to touch. They're finding new shit all the time. I, I know that's what I mean. Like, but you, I mean, oceans. like you imagine if you and I were like, say, if we wanted to backpack and we just packed and we started heading directly south, even onto everybody's farm and ranch land, we'd still be finding like not oh, new yeah. species, but we'd be finding things like. We'd You'd be probably be stepping a place that nobody stepped before. Yeah, we'd be It's that open shit. of a country. Yeah, no doubt. And you go, hey, there's this fucking sweet rock. How come... Oh, man. We didn't pick it up, yeah, or how I've come... Seen some shit. Like, I've seen out at this one place. Fucking worked out there for a while. There's this huge, like, at least, I'm not, I'm just guessing, but I'm guessing no less than five, six tons. Huge rock. Rolled out on the edge of this other rock, almost like a fucking Lion King looking rock, out into this coulee. But this other one is rolled out onto it, and it stays mm. there, right out on the edge of it. Like there's, there's nothing holding it there. Like there isn't rocks jammed up into it to make sure it doesn't roll. Like it's just fucking perfect. Like something put that there. It's giant. Yeah. Yeah. Something put that out there. There's not. It didn't it was, roll down the hill some in when something sloughed away once and just stopped perfectly. But what if it did? I, do we I live guess, in a Do we live in a universe where everything's possible? And maybe I you mean, run into some of those anomalies every day. I, it could be, I guess. But like every once in a while, you're like, "That's the one out of the fifty thousand <laughs> tries in that right? universe. That's the time it landed on the fucking no thing." No shit. It could or that's be. the time you rolled a strike. Or yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe there's some other shitty universe that like. <laughs> Who knows? Like, I don't know. I'm but a, I'll have to bring you out there and show you that one time. It's on public land. Just let you look at it because it's it's crazy, dude. I'm glad we did this episode because I like going deep on some every once in a while because that's what things are supposed to be about. They're supposed to be fucking fun. And oh man, yeah, no doubt. Like, like they, you're supposed to be able to drive your car and let your mind just explore and wander. And that's yeah. where like that's some of my favorite spots in my brain when I'm driving or like if you take your brain to someplace like that. Oh, it's yeah. fun to get to get deep like that, you know, instead of not Hell take yeah, everything dude. so fucking serious yeah, all the time. You, we could I, do a financial like we saying, podcast all day yeah. and tell you how to pay your bills. Like we were. Or no, we couldn't, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> we could try. You could take our advice if you <laughs> like. But. You know what I do? I buy some new skateboard trucks. Right? That's the last 50 bucks you've got. You, got you don't 49? have 50 bucks? I'll oh. still take some new fucking yeah. trucks. Find a way. Right? You need those new trucks. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> We don't have any money, but I got to go board this weekend. There's a storm coming in. Yep. Give me some powder. It's okay. I'll work next weekend. Right. I'll pull a double. No. <laughs> It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Just go <laughs> with it. That's what I'm always saying. 
Just go with it. Just fucking roll with it. I mean, I'm. Uh, have you ever tried to not roll with a punch? You get knocked out. Take it man. on the chin. You're done. You gotta roll with them. I. Uh, I wonder what it's gonna be like when our kids get a little bit older that we actually get to take them. I mean, like, like I said, I take Braden skiing and snowboarding. I mean, like, if our girls will actually do yeah, that, or, if, or if you and I are just going to spend the rest of our days at Build-A-Bear and fucking Maurice's or whatever, <sighs> the buckle. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Claire's. Yep. <laughs> oh. Watch, watch, here in 10 years, it'll be like the stores that are secondhand, like Dillard's will be the fucking bee's knees. Yep. Claire's will be a thing of the past. I don't know. I know, see, I don't know, see, it's hard when, like, Ivy's age, like, you feel like you know the kind of person they're going to be, but you never know what might change. As of right now, I know she would love to go up there and snowboard. Lily, I think she would, because just this summer, she tried some new things, and she was good at it, and she liked to do it, like baseball. I don't know anybody I never that... thought she would have been, but dude, she can fucking hit the ball, like. Dude, ever since Lily pulled that one dance move at dance that day, oh, that man. one where she like you knew that she too. hit the Michael Jackson oh, dance. Perfect. She looked she, like she was moonwalking and shuffling. She'd maybe at the same never time. done that before, exactly no. like that, and maybe never will again. But I was like, Dude. holy! Did you see that dance move she just yeah. pulled off? That was about the day too, where I was like, holy shit, Lily, she's a fucking badass. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Because, like, ever since she's been tiny, you know, sports are only for boys, according to her. Like, yep. I mean, now that she's older, she understands, but I didn't ever think she'd get over that mentality. Savannah started going I to some basketball she... camps now, and she likes it. She loves it, but I worry that maybe she's starting later than, yeah, like, right. in Malta, like, the fucking image. You better start them out of the womb, you know? Right. But Savannah's fairly I mean, if she's coordinated. And, she's good yeah. at something. Like she'll be good at. It. Think about some of the people. For problems, she'll take up. She'll love basketball and turn out to be fucking four eleven like me my whole life. You know, yeah. like I didn't have much hope in basketball. Yeah, I was decent at it. Like to, I shouldn't even say decent, but like if I would have had another six inches, I bet I would have been really good. You oh, know, yeah, like no shit, dude. It's weird to think that, but. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world of the way that I was built because here I am at almost 37 fucking skateboarding with 15 year olds yeah, and no still shit. having fun as hell. Like, I don't know. Shit, dude. Any one of you that's too fucking proud to. I just had the other day I had a teacher come up. This is a, kind of a cool story. And he was talking about, like, he came up and he's mowing our, our lawn up there for the skate park. And he's like, man, I, I used to skate back in my day and I'd love to get up here and skate a little more, but I'm a little worried. You know, there's people up here and I don't want to care what they think. I go, us up here, nobody's going to give a shit as long as you're trying. Yeah, no Like, shit. if you're crashing or not, nobody's going to, like, ha, ha, you're crashing. Yeah, no, okay. Everybody's going to be like, hey, dude, put your foot here, or dude, you know. Right. And he's like, well, I really. You're leaning way too far yeah. forward going into that. Yeah, and, and so I told him, I was like, I, uh, I go, you know what I do to, to actually, that helps me out a ton is I longboard around town. That's helped me, like, learn some of the more basic stuff, escape, like, just getting comfortable, you know. Right. He's like, oh, I got a longboard. I'd love to take it to school, but I know people make fun of me. I go, sure they're gonna, but who? Cares? But who I go, you're the one pulling up on a longboard, grinning ear to ear, because you just skateboarded to school. Right. I go, I I take mine all the time down to the post office or like to the to go get like small things of groceries. Yeah, and I can tell there's like old cowboy dudes looking at me like, fuck's he doing on a skateboard in the middle of a Wednesday? No shit. And I'm like fuck are you doing not on a skateboard in the middle of a Wednesday? Because sorry for your luck, buddy. I'm having a blast. No shit. And I could give a shit what he thinks about it. No, that's the I'm the one that rolled up riding a wheelie on the little 50 or like, or I I just hit a little jump off a curb right before I pulled into Albertsons. And laugh all you want, but you drove your fucking minivan here, hating life with... No shit. I was just going to say it. Fucking... It's harder in a little town because, you know, I don't care, you, though. Like, it's not harder for that's me. What like, I was just going to say, who fucking cares? I wish more people could take that mentality. Like, they're as long all, as you're fucking happy. You everybody's know? so worried about, like, oh, think about what they're doing. And, like, yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm happy. No shit, dude. Whatever, Whatever takes happiness about. is, like, go fuck yourself. You want to try my skateboard? You can't even stand up on it. Right? Like, sorry for your luck. You're just mad because you look like an idiot. And fuck you, I'm going to grill cheeseburgers too. Don't, like, blame it on that. Don't, like, right. you know. I, 
and I get that that's not everybody's thing, and they could laugh at me about not whatever it is, you know. But I don't feel like I don't think that's what you were put on the planet for is to not enjoy something. No, fuck. And if I enjoy scaring the shit out of myself in action sports, I mean, then we were just into the theories. I could get into another one on that fucking show, but I mean, you think about it with the way we we think the world works, we're fucking. We're just programmed to do one thing one way, and that's how it is. Fuck, fuck that. I agree with you, dude. You got to make time for a little bit of happiness here and there. Have to. I mean, why not make most of it? I mean, as long as you're not hurting somebody else. Right. If you're fuck content yeah, to not. I know. I'm. I fucking. I try to do as many things as I can. That fucking I mean, happen. don't get me wrong. A mansion on the top of the hill would be fucking great. But would that make you happy if. What you had to be working every day to pay for that thing to fucking stay on, yeah. Unless you were like had a talent just to that afford you something like that. Or... Fucking, I one hundred percent get it. If it's something like you loved playing guitar and you built that up and you did that, or you love even if you loved selling gas and you did right. that, and but if that's not a passion, is that are you happy then? Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like I said, you got to make a compromise somewhere, but that don't mean you can't. Still keep time for the things that make me happy. Fuck, like I was, like we were saying about skateboarding and snowboarding, shit. hunting for me, like elk hunting for me mm-hmm. is a fucking huge thing. Love doing that. You might fuck that whole month's bills up by knowing that you got to take a fucking expensive hunting trip. But oh, yeah, I you know that that's it. no compromise. Yeah, like exactly. I, I'm going hunting. Exactly. Like that's a that's one thing I told Kelsey a long time ago. I was like, this is something. Like I, I do. Th- obviously I didn't get I didn't go snowboarding as much as I wanted to, you know. But when it comes to hunting, that's like I don't care if we don't have the money or not. I'll, I'll fucking walk out there if I have to and be gone for a few days. But yep. yeah, that's one thing for sure. Hunt. You. I could snowboard every day or I Me guess too, ski man. and still probably be like I didn't get enough. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's it's happening. Well, up there. Uh, two years ago was. Like, when we were even able to go to Bear Paw, mm-hmm. and the powder was just, that was... That was yeah, a good year. That was how it was. Is Once the day was over, you were just like, fuck, it's 4 o'clock already, or 3 o'clock? Jesus Christ. It wasn't right. enough, Dad. I know, one more run. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, send me up one more time. Anyway, I'm dude, I'm glad you finally came in and we got a podcast yeah, in. It's been too. fucking... Way too long. I'm saying two months, and it might be three months that, since I've actually popped one out. And I just changed the website up a bit, uh, a bunch this week. I mean, like, not a whole bunch. Changed some pictures and the layout and stuff. And uh, I'd love to put more effort into, like, this end of the Montarctica business. Not only podcasts, but, like, the clothing and all that. But the problem is what pays the bills is when I do somebody else's logo or graphic right. design. You know, like, somebody else's posters. and Not quite there yet. Yeah, I mean... Or fixing other people's cell phones. I I enjoy doing it, but it's not like I'd love to build right. this end of it more, you know. But it's almost impossible to make that full jump to something like this oh, without like I don't know, without having some sort of financial backing to start with. Yeah. Well, I mean, like we were just talking, fuck. You gotta have money in this world. I mean, unless you're completely willing to live on the street with nothing, you have to have even fucking homeless people have suppose, to have money. Suppose, they have to fucking ask someone for a little bit of money. Do you suppose it was back in the day, like when they were, when it was traders? There were guys sitting around bitching at the campfire going, you got to have beaver pelts. Right. Just got to have them beaver pelts, man. I can't. You cannot marry that fucking boy. He don't even have 10 beaver pelts. <laughs> he ain't worth shit. Bitch ran off to another He's fucking dude. He's got two dude. beaver pelts, and one of them's so goddamn terrible. I she ran even... off to the guy with fleas, but he had right? 15,000 beaver pelts. Like, yeah. she didn't give a fuck. But they couldn't... had a massive beaver <laughs> fucking pond. <laughs> That's why she married him. That's where it all started. Oh, by the beaver pond. What if it was even fucking worse than that? Like, back, way back, like, well, well, he's got seven teeth, and you've only got three, so, <laughs> like, you're cooler than him. He's got a family dentist. Right. Yeah. Fuck. Wouldn't that be nice? Dental fucking work is expensive. It probably was. Like, I'm, I guarantee you back in the hunter-gatherer days, women were fucking banging more hunters and gatherers. 
They were like, man, this guy's badass. Yep. He killed seven boars. He gave me eight boars' heads this week. They just wanted the food. They just want to be fed. <laughs> <laughs> the head's not even the best part. <laughs> it's the bat fact, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy to think. I'm sure, it, yeah. I don't know. Whoever the guy was that came up and he was like, hey, give me all of your fucking gold. And you see this piece of paper? It's worth just as much. I'll trade <laughs> Brilliant. You. Who the fuck yeah, was that? Whoever scoundrel? that guy was, was just like, he was fucking thinking. He's that, like, no, 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 no. See, this says. A fucking insurance salesman. This paper a- says that you, this is just as much as gold. So you got a hundred thousand dollars here. Just give me your gold, and this paper. They said the guy that swindled him though walked up and goes, "All right, you give me that paper." Yeah. And uh, in case shit, you give me that paper every month, and if you happen to wreck that there microphone right there, shit, I'll give you a little bit back. I'll. I might replace it. Yeah, we might give you a half price. Yeah. God damn. (laughs) And he talked him into it. Yeah. Who the fuck? Give me your already worthless paper and. I won't help you that much. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal to me. You're right, I'm in. Yeah. Don't oh, worry, shit. honey. <laughs> we got insurance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're insured. It's got full coverage. The Chris Don't Rock worry. fucking that stand up thing where he's like, it's I call it in case shit. <laughs> I think it was I think it's Chris Rock. It's either Chris Rock or Chris Tucker, but in case shit happens. <laughs> you yeah, pay him in case shit happens. No shit. Yeah, I can't believe that. I uh, it's paper. We make it from trees. It'll grow back. Yeah. And we cut it in these little tiny slices. Give me your gold for paper. It's I wonder how many trees it takes to cover what we have in paper money. I don't know, man. I don't either. I just wonder. Too many. <laughs> Too many for something that's just. And then after so long, you know, like, God, what was I just listening to? They're talking about money. You know, they come out with new bills every so often. And they make so many new ones. Like, every bill they've ever made is out there somewhere. You know, well, it's like, been, yeah, whether it's been ground up or not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no the, but there's inflation. Like, yeah. Fuck, you go to the goddamn store and get an avocado, and one week it's 99 cents, the next week it's 250. What makes sense? How does that make sense? Like, ah, it's a good harvest. These ones are worth. A week dollar. later, it's ninety nine cents again, though. Yeah. Like, why do the sales go up and down? Why can't you just flat rate that shit? There should be a, there should be an avocado exchange, just like the fucking, <laughs> just like goddamn Wall Street, and you'd be like, this week avocados are worth ninety seven <laughs> yeah. cents. I'm gonna invest in some avocados. They're a little down this week. Next week. Looks They're like it's fucking rain a lot next week. Four ninety five. You get. I'm gonna yeah. sell some avocados. I don't know, man. It's crazy. It just can't work like that. Well, anyway, it's I gotta piss again, and this has been a pretty fun podcast. Yes, it has. I suppose we could wrap it up. It's fucking one in the morning. Yeah, I'm glad we got back. We made it right back finally. Fuck, I'm. I'd love to promise a new episode this week and next week again, but it might be another three months again. You never know with me. It's really tough. Yeah, it's hard. I wish I could just pump them out. And I, I could if I had that, I guess, motivation or willpower. Or, I don't know what you, Dedication, yeah. maybe that's like what I'm Like you just for. said, though, one in the morning. Yeah. By the time we that's, were, how, that's how we finally get one slipped in. By the in. time we were both able to get over here and, and do one, like, shit, 10 o'clock already. Yeah. And usually at 10 o'clock at night, people are, like, sitting on the couch watching Netflix. And Yeah, I know. Like, your family, like, if you got one kid that wanted to be a butthole and stay up that yeah. night well and that's why i mean our original plan was what 9 30 yep. 15 ended up being 10 o'clock part of it was my fault i skated a little extra long today well fuck i wouldn't have made it over anyway but there was there's some like willow the, was about to sleep but then woke wide up because she needed to tell me all about the museum they went to today. you saw the big buffalo <laughs> mean indians push them off the cliff <laughs> she's talking so good <laughs> i saw the big bear i don't like the bear that's funny. She's got this concerned look on her face all the whole time. She's telling me, no, it's bear. I love when kids, like, just start getting language, you know? It's funny, too, because every time I'd ask her, I've been there, so I know exactly. I'd be like, did you see the baby beaver? She'd be like, no, the bear. <laughs> the <laughs> bear. Did you see a big elk? No, 
the, the bear, the wolf, the mean Indians. Like that's about all she remembered. I think to me, I ask her. About, <laughs> Uh, okay, that's I shouldn't say that. I guess. Like, there's this museum where they've got a, what do you call it, a setup of a buffalo jump. Yeah. So there's mannequins dressed up like Indians, you know, running them off the cliff. A couple of them have spears, but my daughter, she remembered the big bear, the Indians yep. throwing spears at buffalo and <laughs> the wolf. She didn't remember the adorable baby beavers and. The adorable baby animals. It's good to know that your daughter's not going to be attracted to a guy with lots of beaver pelts. Yeah, she, she knows what's <laughs> worth what. She, she gets real life. Man. Yeah. You're not going to go beaver pelting. She don't like guys collecting furs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope not. She's got a while till then. Fuck, I hope that they're like 25. Well, maybe not 25 because then Dude, you I have know. weird daughters. Isn't but that, still that's the like, thing. Like, you want to draw the line. Because, like, I had kids young, you know. You had kid pretty young, like yeah. you see these couples that have kids that wait till they're forty, fifty fucking years old. You're like, Jesus. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, I don't know. I I just try not to think about the first fucking day my daughter comes home with so and so saying, Hey, this is my friend. Like fucking yeah, right, your friend. I hope Braden hates Savannah's first boyfriend as oh. much as he hates Savannah most of the time. I don't know. Like how, if that's yeah, like no shit. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna take it. I don't have the yeah the older boy to be like, who the fuck is this guy? Problem is though, he's got my genes. He's not gonna be like well, see, six foot seven and well, he'll be tough though. Yeah. See, that's the problem. Like I know how I was back in the day. Like God. Damn it, what the fuck is wrong with men and this fucking little boys? You kidding me? What's wrong with that? Never mind. I don't want to start the gender <laughs> wars. <laughs> no, <shit. laughs> There's just stop her there. It'll be, two, could, it'll be 2.30 and then we'll be like, be yeah, going. We'll, we'll cut it off again this time. Maybe. Where, where it all began. <laughs> then we'll get into some conspiracy theory about when fucking gender wars started and why. And Willie Nelson's a robot because he just keeps pumping out music. Yeah. Willie's one good thing left in this planet. Oh. Willie Nelson. He's fucking 86 years old and still throwing out new music. He's in Amsterdam running into the beer fest, guys, looking for the pot fest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, let's get the fuck out of here. All on right. This one. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thanks for coming over, man. On one. Fuck yeah, it was fun. Uh, Montarca, hopefully next week. We'd, yeah. lo- we'd love to see you. And thank you to everybody that came out to yeah. any of my comedy shows in between now and then. I, I know I'd love to get on here and thank you guys more. But seriously, I do it because I love it, and I hope you guys love them too. And whatever else the hell we keep scheming up around here. But uh, support your local communities. Make it a badass place to fucking live. Why not? Hell yeah. All right, and we're out. Thanks, Noah. You bet.